we don't have enough loyalty to each oh, other. And oh. that's that's the thing that I've, you know, come around to like in the last year, I've, I've thought about this a lot is like, what would the proper amount of sincerity and loyalty look mm-hmm. like? Mm. If you have, if, if I'm loyal to you, you're loyal to me because we're, bro- we're brothers, we're Muslims. People don't realize that these refutation videos do more harm than they do good. Yep. The mission of Islam is to spread the deen of the tawheed and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This idea of validation and this idea of acceptance is it's throughout it's it's human nature mm-hmm. you know to have this shout out to Sajid Lifem right I think that's his Lip name Sajid yeah, Lifem yeah, Lifem Lifem yeah. Lifem right yeah we were both in Medina together uh, may Allah bless his brother because it was actually a and turning he, point in my life uh, the Sadegah Shoaib he's a very convincing brother <laughs> anyone who knows that he's very convincing right you have to call people to Islam and not yourself there you go copy 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 yeah Imam Tom so like revert yes yeah. Alhamdulillah how long 2010 wow MashaAllah Barakallah yeah yeah how about you what, what year um, I would say 2011. Okay, 2011. Yeah, so very similar. We're close. Yeah, You're a little older close. than me. <laughs> yeah, 34. Yeah, I'm 34. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. I think. Um, I think you know these things in our lives have to happen for us to really discover what the the truth is. You understand what I'm saying? And just some people learn differently. Like I, I'm, I'm a school teacher. Right? Yeah. And I've realized, and obviously, duh, right? Everyone learns differently, right? But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created every human different. Like obviously we have the similar needs that we all have, how Allah has created us, but all of our personalities are a little different. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what it's going to take for that servant, not anyone, but that servant to be guided to the straight path. And, you know, whatever difficulties, challenges, and everything that comes about, that's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can come to that course that he wants you on. That's right. You get me? Yeah. And... You know, it's unfortunate that sometimes you have to go through it, but at the same time, alhamdulillah, because without that course... Exactly. It's like your own uh, personally tailored program. Yes. <laughs> and everyone's got a price to pay. You know alhamdulillah. I mean? And that's just, that's, that's just what it is, you know? And, you know, now in retrospect, we start thinking about our lives and how we could have done things differently, you know, without, without obviously, obviously we acknowledge the qadr of Allah, right, but right. somehow, you know, you still think about if you could have done it differently, of course. you know, but... This is just it. There's no even if one slight thing was changed, mm-hmm. the you know the story and the thing that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is trying to preserve doesn't happen. Big one time. thing, Big one time. tiniest of things changes. So Alhamdulillah at all at all levels. Yeah. Mashallah. No, it's crazy because you know when I went to um college, you know before I was a Muslim, I was really into music like deep, mm-hmm. and um just I started getting interested in like politics and history and stuff like that. So actually, yeah. when it came time to go to college. I half applied to music schools and I half applied to like other schools and I was like Got leaving it. it to the last second Got to it. decide like which way I was going to go. Procrastination or just leaving? No, it? just I wasn't sure. Yeah. Uh, and I just uh. like, you know, just kind of hedge my bets sort of thing. Got it. And then uh, for whatever reason at the last, you know, I got like very political once like 9-11 happened and, and all mm. the sort of like, you know, invasion of Iraq, stuff like that. And so at the last minute, basically like the last possible minute to decide, I decided to go like the, the political route and stuff like Ooh. that and I left music behind. And that actually is what ended up exposing me to Islam. SubhanAllah. Right? Like when I went to college and started studying stuff and I ran into Muslims and like, and it was like the start of a long road that led me to Islam. And so I always think like, just exactly like what you said, I went to music school, I went to Curtis or I went to any of these other places. Like what would have been the path? Would I ever have even been exposed? So so like, let me ask you this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, so wh- whenever <laughs> someone speaks to me like this, you know what I mean? I, mm. I, I would consider myself, right? More mm. than anything. Alhamdulillah. Look, you, yourself too. We're all da'is, right? Yeah. We all give da'wah to whatever ability. And I would say that there's a da'i in everyone. That's, That's right. what I try to pr- uh, promote yeah, and yeah, preach. Yeah, right. You literally have no business in this country unless you're giving da'wah. Yeah. And I know that sounds kind of weird sometimes. And some people might not understand. And if we look at the lives of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, right? Like, why would you ever want to leave Mecca? Like, think about a hundred thousand rewards, bro, for a prayer. Yet, the act of da'wah and the call to Islam is more significant than you just sitting in that one position just praying all day long in the Kaaba, in the Haram. You know what I mean? So like, leaving these areas to go spread Islam, that reward is just crazy. Mm -hmm. So I believe personally that there's a da'i in everyone. Like, if you're in this country right now, like you, like you did not your parents did not come over here so they could just work a job and get you in school or whatever like you yes do all those things but also spread the deen that's what you have to do so I like I said I definitely believe there's a da'i in everyone and it's just our job to help unlock it you mm-hmm. know um, but what you're saying is amazing because even though 
you know, you're a da'i and you're an imam, alhamdulillah, there's also an artistic end to you. So did you not consider like maybe uh, in your raps being political, like for example, like the Lupe fiascos and all that, <laughs> did you not try to do it that way? What were you thinking? Well, that's the thing. And that's actually something that I ask a lot of people and I'll probably ask you at some point as mm. well, is that <clears throat> I find it amazing how Allah uses our pre Islamic life yes. in creative and new ways yes. after we accept Islam. Yes. It's crazy. <laughs> yes. So like if you look at, you know, my uh, my sort of musical ability and my musical experience was really key to me learning Arabic and oh, learning wow. the Quran. SubhanAllah. Because I was, you know, I did like multiple different genres. Like I was like a classically trained vocalist. Like I had a repertoire. Whoa, like, 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 like even like opera and stuff like that. Whoa, so really? I, yeah, no, serious. So it's like Imam, I, okay. Yeah. So I had like, you know, songs in Italian and French and German, like stuff. I didn't know these languages, but I could sing and I had like, like whatever. Figaro. Yeah, like that, that. Oh my God. Wow. That, 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 so that's that. And then I was in rock bands and I was in all this stuff. Like, all up and down. Jazz. Like I did everything you know used to play some some play, some spots in philly um but yeah so when it so when it came time to learning another language and learning the the quran um it was just made easy for me like 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 Allah, the, the pronunciation and even some Allah. people and i hate to i hate to praise myself but people even in my community would be like like you don't have an accent like when mm -hmm. you speak arabic it's just like wow. just because i was used to speaking in different languages singing Allah, in different Allah. languages things like that you know and the, obviously there's a, a musicality to the quran and reciting the quran uh, that just There's like that rhythm. totally just, that exactly flow. that just like yeah. grabbed me and like yeah. drug me in. It's That's like, crazy. Um, so it kind of like it used those skills that I had, but in a new, different, and productive way. That's so. That's so crazy. You mentioned that, right? I was actually talking to my wife about this a few days ago, and I was just like, "Baby, like, isn't it amazing how Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has used all of our previous skills?" And he used it for the deen yeah. because prior to like Islam and everything like that, I was really into filmmaking mm. and just how things work and editing and learning how to do these things. It was at a very shallow level, but I was still working on it uh, for a good two years or so like that. So subhanAllah, when it came time to like later on in life, when it got reintroduced into my life and I had to go back to like the final cut and go back to filmmaking and all that sort of stuff when I was just like recording everything by myself. Um, though it was still difficult, I still had a, a better start than the person starting from nothing, yeah. from zero. Yeah, and it's so interesting that Allah, so look at Allah's mercy, right? That he can use something negative that you were doing or something like that could seem not positive or something yeah. and just convert that into active worship where now an old skill of mine that maybe I was making music videos with. Right, That's exactly. what I was doing, exactly, right? Exactly. I was making like music videos for people for free just so in exchange for me to practice my skill of editing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has flipped that to where I can use those editing skills to make Islamic content instead. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Like think about it, like, you know, we have like these tattoos and yeah. these sins and stuff like that. It could go from something being the worst to something that could earn me a reward by talking about it and calling people away from a sin and to the right path. So it's just amazing how no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does that. You know, I've got, I've got ink as well. And you know, it's like when, when somebody sees that and they see a kufi, they're like, Wait a second. You know, it almost starts a conversation. Oh, one thousand percent does. That's also why I never changed my name. In addition to it being like my my father's name, we have the same name. But it's like somebody sees a Muslim and a practicing Muslim, and yeah. your name is Tom. Yeah. Like what? And yes. Like it's almost people can't it's dawa just resist from that. asking. Like they have to ask about it. And it messes with their categories. No, it does. It, because uh, look, look, look. We have. Uh, so, you know what it is, man. I, I've always found this, and you could definitely tell me if this is similar to your experience, you know, like, uh, especially in the beginning of social media. One thing that for me personally, I've never passed the eye test, right? Mm. Like, I've never passed the eye test of someone who looks the part, right. speaks the part, walks the part, you know, <laughs> like, even as a school teacher, right? When someone looks at me, I don't dress like the specific teacher. I don't speak to the kids as the traditional speaker does. And even when it comes to like the Islamic content, I don't do things traditional where traditional things are happening, you know? And I've just never passed the eye test. So when someone speaks to me, or first they, when they just judge you based upon the just the look of it, mm -hmm. right? They're like, what does this guy have to really offer? You right, get right, what I'm saying? Right. But then Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put something where he increases the the wudda. He has the love between the two hearts. And then when you give a person a chance, you listen, you're like, ah, he's actually talking some sense right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm gravitating towards what he's saying without knowing that I'm enjoying what he's saying. So I've never passed the eye test. And I think one of my biggest mistakes, and I think that people watching and listening at home, you know, sometimes we change 
just so that people could acknowledge us or mm. give us mm. our, our flowers or stuff. Like there was a time, bro, where I literally, I did everything in my power to look the part just so people can acknowledge me as some Islamic speaker or right. something like that. Yep. Like I was literally behaving this way and I just had this existential crisis like, hey, no, this is not who you are, bro. You are who you are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you this way. He's given you your gifts. He's given you your virtues. Act on those virtues. You don't have to switch yourself up to be accepted by others. And imagine the riyah that I'm earning thinking, imagine if you don't have any self-awareness and Allah doesn't educate you, mm -hmm. that you just mm -hmm. think that all of a sudden I'm wearing like a bish and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, right, if that's you, yep. if that's you, but all of a sudden I'm wearing the bish, I'm wearing the thing, I'm thinking I'm Mufti Mecca, all of a sudden I'm wearing the thing and you know, it's out of love. But part of me is also trying to be taken more seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? And I don't think people were taking me seriously. Right. And I did everything I could so people could take me seriously instead of thinking about my intentions, mm -hmm. thinking about mm -hmm. why am I actually doing this. And once you put that aside and you really find yourself and you center yourself and you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you realize that, look, I am who I am. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you made me this way. You know, use me to serve the deen however you use me. And definitely. allow me not to change for the worst or... Yeah, definitely. No, I agree 100%. And the proof's in the pudding at the end of the day. You know, mm. I, I find it really interesting that if you go back into the history, you know, the early Muslims, that's how they were viewed by other people. They were mm. like the hicks. They were like mm. the hillbillies. Like mm. when they rolled up into Persia, right? And Persia had this like thousands of years long civilization. They had like the high cushions and the fancy okay. everything or whatever. There's a like the seriously, it's like you read the stories, it'll make you laugh. Here comes this like Bedouin guy. He's like, what the heck is this guy doing here? And he's got, you know, just like he owns like one pair of clothes. Yeah. And he's like dirty from like the, the, the and he he drags actually it's funny. This like literally happened when they went to make war with the with the Persians. And he's got his uh you know, Persian rugs are like the big thing. They always wear the big yes, thing. Yes, yes, so yes. imagine this like hand woven Persian rug and the king sitting there on his throne and stuff like that, all the his attendants around him. Dude comes in. You know, a Muslim guy, he's about to give him the ultimatum, basically. It's yeah. like, yo, it's like you got to come with, come right or we're going to go to war. And he drags his spear on the ground and he cuts up the Persian rug when he's, when he's dragging it on the ground. Everyone's just looking at him like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> but the thing was, he was clear, 100%. That's who he was. And he's calling to Tawheed and he says, listen. There's only one God. You can be with us, or you can pay us the jizya, or we can go, we can throw down if you want to. Yeah, you know, and that's like I think that's a model of what you're saying is that yeah. nobody we're not some sort of cookie cutter, mm. you know, like development yes. in the suburbs where every house is the same or whatever. Or you gotta okay, yes. I've got to talk about Islam, so I got to wear the white thobe and I got to put the pen. In Even the though that, I think that's sometimes that gets pushed. I think yeah. that I think also it does get pushed, and it doesn't allow people from so like from my area. Like you got to remember something. Everyone's raised differently. Yeah. Everyone comes from different areas. There's not many people who look like me who can come into, even though you might be, he's a brown guy with whatever the case might be. That's not the case, you know? Mm. Like I'm literally from, like from the hood, you know, I'm from the ghetto. I'm, I'm from the streets. I'm from the, I'm a product of public education. I'm mm -hmm. a product mm -hmm. of being raised by a single parent. There's not many people who look like me, have my similar story that can feel like I can make it out too. Exactly. You understand? And and when, when we're saying like passing the eye test and talking about that companion who's coming over there to literally, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given such power to him that one man coming out is taking down a whole like military, a whole army, a whole yeah. nation, you know, it just shows you that there needs to be multiple representation. There needs to be people. Like when you said that you didn't change your name, that's such a cool idea because mm -hmm. a kid thinks that only an Arab could be a Muslim. We know right. those stereotypes. Yeah, yeah. Only you got to be an Arab to be Muslim. You got to look like this to be a Muslim, speak like this, change your name, change mm. this and all. There's so much, so many points of entry. Yeah. Like there's so many entry points, like so many gatekeepers for you to become a Muslim mm -hmm. when we're making it difficult on people. Yeah, it's yeah, easier yeah. than you think. Yeah, you're right. And no no shade at people who change it because some people change Definitely. their names because they want to turn a new leaf. 100%. Like, 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 do but, that, do that. But, but what we're saying is that you shouldn't feel compelled to, you don't have to fit this mold of like some like perfect idealistic Muslim well individual said. that people want to put you in the box. Because like you're saying, like I, I forget the word you use, but 
you can build up like a resentment. You know what I mean? It's like oh, if, yeah. if you're trying to be somebody who you're not, yeah. like you're trying to speak in a certain way and you start throwing Yanni in every yeah. two. <laughs> yes. Oh, yo, <laughs> listen, bro. Work. Listen, that's you know? a real thing. Yeah, no, that's a real like, thing. You know, me and uh, some of the guys, you know, I don't know if you, I, uh, you I, I learned that you were accepted to Islamic University of Medina, Medina correct? University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. I know it's shocking to many people watching out there. I was accepted <laughs> into there. I stuck my way in. No, but it's it's interesting. I, 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 Subhanallah, I was actually thinking about this a few days ago. It's so funny you mentioned that. But yes, I was accepted, alhamdulillah, but by Allah's grace, he had a different route for me. Yeah. And this was around the time. It's so crazy you said that. This was around the time where I thought that for me to be accepted mm -hmm. in the mainstream or by my local or by my whoever, that I needed some type of credit and right. credentials and, you know, like some type of degree or something. Like, don't get me wrong, having those things, oh, going to study and do that. Like, obviously, there's some people that Allah SWT has opened their heart to study in Medina or, or in Egypt or wherever. Yo, know, do that, right? I've never been a person for the school just because it's never, they've never taught the way I learned, yeah. if that makes sense, yeah. right? Like I learned differently and they've never taught me in a way to learn. They never even knew that there's other ways to learn. Yeah. So school just was never for me. Plus I was going through a lot during those times. Mm -hmm. But the main thing was that my intentions, like imagine me earning a degree, right? Mm -hmm. Doing all these things. Mm -hmm. and But the intention inside was always for something else. You're trying to please people at the end of the day. I mean, it's like really we're, we're more concerned about the, the acceptance of other people yes. than the quality and the substance of our da'wah. Yes. And that's our main point here that I think we were trying to say is that the proof's in the pudding, right? Like we're talking about substance rather than form, you know, dress it up however you want. The important thing is that uh, you're sincere and no one's doing anything haram. Like yeah. it's just about this is the big the big umbrella. Yeah. This is the big umbrella of what Islam allows. If we, yeah. we talk because the Muslim community, you know, sometimes makes me laugh because we talk a good game when it comes to like, you know, there's culture, oh, we yeah. accept cultures and yeah. the diversity <laughs> and every different colors. Like, but That's then yeah. someone comes up with tats in the masjid yeah. and they're like, whoa, you, you're all wait looking a second. At him. You're all yeah, like yeah. staring at that guy or whatever the case right. is. And, and you said it, uh, Imam, you said that, bro. It's so crazy you say that because like, if you really want to test how serious the Muslims are, right? Uh, like, have your have someone from a different culture try to come and marry your daughter, right? Oh, Imagine someone's a little bit more darker than you. Try, you get what I'm saying? Bro, you really oh want to put this to a test? Yeah. Like, have one of these things to really show people how you really are. And wallahi, like, our religion doesn't promote that. Yeah. Yet, unfortunately, we're still stuck to those things. Big time. And, you know, we... A lot of times people don't pass the eye test. And I think that that's what's stopping a lot of people. And, you know, some people will misquote the, the narration of Umar bin Khattab, when he talks about, you know, we judge from the appearance, right? right, right, right from right, the right. apparent, right? Yes. From the yes. apparent. Yep. But notice he's saying the apparent, not the appearance. Those are two different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Appearance from what you can see and you're making a whole conclusion based upon it. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. But most of the times we're judging based upon the appearance, that that's the deciding factor of if I agree agree with them or if I don't agree with them, you know? Yeah. So, but when, when Umar Khattab is talking about that, he's talking about a more holistic type of approach when it comes to the apparent that, okay, he's doing this, but I also know he's like this, but I do know his family. His family's like this. He comes from a good family. I've had private conversations with him. He's not like that. Perhaps maybe I'm misunderstanding what he's mm -hmm. saying. Mm -hmm. Notice the amount of high level thinking that you have to do and you're not just going for the low level fruit yeah. you are you're not you're actually making excuses for them you're actually thinking better of them you get what i'm yeah, saying definitely. so if you're if you're catching yourself it's easier to just pass a judgment on someone it's just so much easier we don't have enough loyalty to each other uh, and uh. that's that's the thing that i've you know come around to like in the last year i've, I've thought about this a lot is like what would the proper amount of sincerity and loyalty look mm -hmm. like mm. if you have if, if i'm loyal to you you're loyal to me because we're, we're brothers we're muslims right it's exactly like you said right if i don't have enough sincerity in my heart mm -hmm. i'm not going to have enough loyalty towards you mm -hmm. so if i see you even seem to do something out of line mm -hmm. here comes the refutation mm -hmm. here comes the you know mm -hmm. i'm going to make a react video but or it whatever. should be the other it should be opposite it should way. be the other right exactly. you should be making an excuse for your brother mm -hmm. say that you know, maybe it's this, maybe it's this. This doesn't mean that you don't talk to them privately right. because it's out of love that you came to them. Exactly. You understand? And like, hey, listen, like, you know, what's going on? Like you said that, let me just get clarification. What did you mean yes, by that? exactly. You know, because like you and I both know that that's not the case. Bro, it's crazy, man. It's like some of the things because, you know, I started working for Yaqeen Institute and I've seen people, you know, a lot of people like question like, like why, why would we do that? <laughs> 
I don't want to turn this. I don't want to turn this into that. But I know what you're saying. But what it showed me that there were people who had my phone number, mm-hmm. who knew me, who could have reached out to me. Yeah. Who were following things and drawing conclusions in their yeah. head, and they never, ever, ever said anything to me like one on one. But then it comes out in a group chat or it comes out on something. Put me on more blast. Fun. Put me on, and then the whole thing. It's like somebody like opened up the dam. You know, it's like, and the whole thing comes out, and you see that what they've been carrying with them this whole time. It's like, oh, you uh, American Islam, you watered down. Wow. Like, bro, you had my number, man. Yeah, you could have like, talked like, to me. Like, you could have, like, the first time you had a doubt or you had a, like you were questioning, like, why am I doing this? What are my intentions? What am I reasoning? You had like, it's not like some rando person. Re- yes. Who, who, like, like people, you have, you my, have my number, bro. Yes. It's like you could have. You know something. what's so interesting, Imam, that you say that. It's so it's so interesting you say that because it's just so much more fun to start gossiping. We right? love drama, man. It's just so much fun to get a clickbaity title. It's so much fun to have a clickbaity type of like thumbnail. Look, I've done it. I know what I'm talking about over here, guys. Like, please, like, I don't, I don't want to be some guy thinking like, oh, he's just trying to call. Trust me, when yeah. I was in my stage of YouTube, which mm-hmm. I'm not in anymore, alhamdulillah, mm-hmm. when I was in my stage of YouTube, I thought to get the most amount of attention, you had to do this, 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 this. And sometimes it didn't align with my own beliefs and values. It went against how I I actually am. And it wasn't until a lot of soul searching, a lot mm. of fixing, a lot of tarbiya within myself, you know, a lot of fixing of my heart, because we're actually talking about diseases of the heart. If we're yeah. being honest, right? And if we boil down our whole conversation, bro, of judgment, of types of, you know, uh, false behavior mm-hmm. and acting a different way than you actually are. This is all part of a disease of the heart. Yep. If we're being honest over yeah. here, right? And I, I'm not afraid to admit that I have had a disease in my heart. I probably still do. We all do, We bro. all do, right? And and our job is to perform the tazkiyah, just the purification of the heart as much as we can mm. and becoming self-aware. You know, I was talking to someone about this and I asked them, you know, like, you know, like if suppose your, your shirt got dirty, you know, like if you mm. hoodie, your shirt, something, some garment got dirty your sneaker something got dirty right like it was a small amount like what's the first process they were like, you got to go wash it. They're like, okay, good. What, what else do you, oh, you got to like, you know, um, you know, like put some of the detergent on it. You know, they're thinking that, you know, we're trying to clean it up. I said, yeah, mm-hmm. but that's not the first step. The first step is to recognize that it's actually dirty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have to first realize that there's something of dirt that's there. Yeah. Once you acknowledge that it is dirty. It is not clean. It is not in your imagination. You try to cut. Con- no, nah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's not a polka dot. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's not. It's you have to acknowledge that it's wrong. It's dirty. It needs to be clean. And then you're able to identify the problem. Once it's there, mm-hmm. then inshallah ta'ala, you're able to clean the situation up. But unfortunately, you know, look, the shaitan wants to drag us to the hellfire. We know Big it. Time. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a common plot. His plan is so laid out in front of us, yet we're falling into a trap every time. Every time. Including myself. Yeah, you, know? you know, the Prophet Muhammad said to That's protect him. certain things. And if you protected these parts of your body, you're guaranteed paradise, right? So, you know, he promised that if you protect what's in between your jaws, you're promised paradise. Isn't it in Shaitan's best interest to attack that so that you're not earning paradise, right? Isn't it in his best interest to set up these group chats, to set up these uh, backbiting conversations, these group meetups where you backbite, these comment sections that are backbiting? I mean, forget about the videos, bro. Look at the comment section. It's so toxic yeah, and detrimental. Yeah, right. And the person <laughs> whose YouTube channel it is, yeah. they're not even being an admin on it. Yeah, They're yeah. just letting people go crazy in the comment section. Not once is the person who owns the video commenting and saying, hey, listen to me, fear Allah, don't speak about your brother this way. Yeah, right. They're encouraging it with their silence. And what's going to happen on the day of judgment? Obviously, uh, we need a whole, we talk about fiqh and we talk about like applied fiqh and like what, Definitely. like uh, somebody has a YouTube channel and you got comments on your YouTube channel and I've, man, you've seen stuff. Yeah. I've seen stuff. As, yeah, oh yeah. That, that's like the, the least of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like sometimes you get threats. Sometimes you get like really filthy stuff. Just nasty. And it's like, uh, does that person who runs that channel have any responsibility? Are they going to see that on the day of judgment? Oh, of, uh, they, of course they have responsibility. Yeah, of course they have responsibility. They need to admin it or they need to hire an admin or get a volunteer to admin it. Yep. But if you start getting comments where, like let's suppose, see these people don't realize that these refutation videos do more harm than they do good. Mm-hmm. They do more harm than they do good. One, it weakens the image of Islam right. to the public. Yep. You understand? Big time. Like it shows that we're so busy fighting amongst each other that yeah. we don't have time to really talk about those enemies 
enemies, right? Like, think about it. If you look at the LGBTQ, right? All of them have their own motives, yet they've all, for the sake of their argument, come together. Yeah, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know unless you paid real close attention that they're actually beefing in between them, in between them. They don't but, get but along. When it comes to the public face, they put up a, a you know, united We're all united. When it comes to us, you search Islam on YouTube, yeah. and the first thing yeah. <laughs> that's going to come it's up. Your fa- it's hit the creator's face with another person's yeah. face over the air, yeah. and it looks like something... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and you know, with this finger, yeah, and right. it's it's just so interesting that that's the route that we've taken. Yeah. Um, but look, respectfully speaking, I've been there. I've done that. I've made videos like that in the past. Every single one of I've us. I've reacted now. to videos like that in the past. I've been on the receiving end of those videos, on the delivering end of those videos, and I'm here to let you know, with the s- small amount of benefit that it does have. Look, if someone does say something publicly that's wrong mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. you sure your first effort is with the manners and the ikhlaq of a muslim to find a way to address it right mm-hmm. that's private or whatever because perhaps you don't know this perhaps let's suppose you said let's suppose i say something mm-hmm. right and i said it and it was wrong right like it was something that was haram that was said that was there or maybe it was something that was ambiguous or something like that right you could go about it a few ways, right? You yeah. could like say, hey, listen, you have my number, yeah. right? Brother Sifat has my number. They say, hey, bro, listen, do you have a minute? Can we have like five minutes? Can we talk about something like this, right? If I'm thinking there's no problem, I should agree to it. Like, what's the problem? What's right. the issue? And you talk me five minutes and then the five minutes becomes 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And then you're coming. This is the thing. You got to come from a place of love, yeah. right? Yeah. You got to come and talk to me from a place of love, not a place that's a cry for help. Yeah. A cry for help, bro, how could you do that? It's, it's filled with so much judgment. It's filled with so much uh, preconceived notion of, I know exactly what you were trying to say. Right, right, I right. know your stance. I know yep. how you're feeling. I know exactly what was happening on the day that you filmed that yeah, yeah, yeah. W- without you even knowing that maybe something happened to me before I filmed it, which affects the entire energy of my whole conversation. Yep. Maybe it came out wrong. Yep. What happened to assuming the best of your brother? No, Come on no. now, right? No, you're Mistakes clearly just, can happen. Uh, you're, you're on the payroll of the feds and you're trying to water down a slam. Right, all of a sudden, yeah. All of a sudden, you're a plant. <laughs> You're, yeah, yeah, you know, you're, you're someone with the FBI. Like, yeah. come on, bro. Like, assume the best in your brother yeah. first, right? Talk to him. Try to call him out a little bit. Mm. But it's just easier and more fun and more cloudy and more exciting to make a video about you instead yeah. of actually trying to reach out to you in the DMs. But someone might say, they're too big of a personality or they're too big. That's not true. You haven't tried. Mm. And, you know, someone knows someone. It's a small world, Aki. Yeah. Someone knows someone. Like, you might not have direct access to me, but you might know someone who does. Do some research. <laughs> but it's just easier to just make a video about someone oh, and to just call them out in a rough and rude manner. And people who are doing that, then they start calling each other out in those manners. And there's a ceiling and a cap to that type of da'wah. Yep. Not only is it hurting the image of Islam, it's hurting your own brand. If you're even thinking that far, like mm-hmm. it's hurting your own brand, right? It's not, and you might think that you're doing the huck and this and that. There's That's no the peace. thing, right? You're patting yeah. yourself on the back, thinking oh, yeah. you're big, you know, big bad lion defending Islam. Mm-hmm. And really you're just tearing everybody else down. You know, and it's like, it's like you said, you know, it's like there's got to be protocol. And you, I believe, I firmly believe that you have to demonstrate your loyalty. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if if somebody goes astray, uh, it says more about you and how you handle it yeah. than it does about the person and how they messed up. Sure. You know, it's like if you're truly loyal, we talk brotherhood, we talk about, you know, a believer doesn't fully believe until he loves her, his brother, he loves her himself. You got to maximize the chance that the person is going to turn back, right? Absolutely. It's like if you're if you're the shepherd of a flock, you got a bunch of sheep, you got one sheep that goes astray, you don't just like take out your gun and like, <laughs> no, you <laughs> don't. That's a good point. You go over there, you don't. try to guide it back. It's like you got, and you got to take every single sort of reasonable measure yes. to, that is going to increase the likelihood that you're going to guide it back. Yes. You know what I mean? And now look, 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 I can't understand if you've tried to contact me you've tried to do every single thing you've tried to do all these things like this right um you know and a person might say that hey listen they made a public comment so i have right. to publicly refute them and all that sort of stuff that's not necessarily the case right yeah. and look there's people out there who know more fic than me who have more scholarly knowledge than i do i don't look, look i don't claim to be anyone Mm. You know, I, I, I've I've left that image and that desire to be accepted a long time ago. Right. And by Allah's grace, I think that's the reason the da'wah has expanded and I've seen so much growth. Mm. Because I've stopped caring about what people might think about me. And I'm focused on the mission of Islam. There you go. The mission of Islam is to spread the deen of the tawheed and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And recognizing that you're not my opposition, that's Ahi. Right. 
Same You're team, not. Bro. We're on the same, same team. team bro. We have different flavors. <laughs> That's exactly it. Man. We have different flavors. Now, don't get me wrong. Yep. If you're doing something wrong, mm -hmm. it should be addressed. Don't get me wrong. Like, like I want to make that clear because someone might in the comments section, but what if they were yeah. doing, you know, our job to, you know, and enjoy we do the good see that. for a bit the evil. We see, we see the opposite. Unfortunately, sometimes people paper over stuff or they look the other way when somebody should have been checked. You yeah. know, and we've seen some yeah. like stuff unfold. It's like, man, 100%. I really wish they should have been checked that, a long time ago. Exactly. You know, it's like so hundred percent with that. And, and but also, also you gotta you gotta remember something. Let's suppose I say something back from twenty fifteen. Right, I made a video 2015. Okay, there's a few factors that's mistakes about that video. Mm -hmm. One, my knowledge. I might not have had the knowledge. Right. Number two, let's suppose from 2015 to now 2023, bro. 2015 was like. a long time ago. It's about to be 10 years. <laughs> yeah. About a lot. Right. If you want to <laughs> dig up an old video of mine. You're gonna find some mistakes. I want to. I want to invite people. Dig it. You're gonna say SQ said what? First step has to be. Does this person still believe that? Yeah, that's like, a good like point. Who? Uh, how many people have you ever seen ask that question? Yeah. I've, Are you still upon that belief of you yeah, had no way, bro? I've been changed that, bro. There's so many videos on. on look, the internet is a living place. You know. You could go about the route of going through everything, checking it, deleting it, deleting, it, deleting, it, deleting, it, deleting it, and you know, like if there is something really harmful to the ummah, it should be deleted. Right. You should go yeah. back and scrub through your thoughts. If you did support something haram, mm -hmm. if you did do something wrong, you should scrub. You should delete it, or whatever the case might be. I found in my personal, in my own personal life, in the dawah that we're doing, when there's something wrong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put something in our heart that we sort of kind of know that this ain't it. Like, right. you know, there's something right. in it. And let's suppose you find out later on, it is your responsibility, your moral responsibility, that you're going to be questioned on the Day of Judgment to be accountable for that which you are posting or putting up. Definitely. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, definitely. You, you want to be accountable for that. So if I've said something that was in favor of something or done something haram or I should acknowledge that. And I found, in my opinion, I found that the more you acknowledge your mistakes, the more love and respect people have for you. It's true. And that, you know, that's the crazy thing. And and I want to try to, I've always had this idea of trying to recommend that brothers team up and do things collectively rather than just individually. Because most people, not everybody, but most people, when you are your brand, you know what I mean? Now there's a conflict of interest. Yeah. Now you don't want to say you're sorry. Now you don't want to admit you were wrong. Because why? You feel like it's going to hurt your brand. Wow. Even though you're right, wow. it won't. People will realize this guy's genuine. I like it. Look at how humble he is. Like whatever. Subhanallah. But because it's like my name, that's why we always wanted to make it Yudha Kameshi. We didn't want to make it Imam Tom, like whatever yeah, channel. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's like if I make a mistake, it's not about me. It's about something bigger than me. So it's your apology needs to come because you represent a community, a masjid, something yes. bigger. It's not just you. And forget all this, man. Yeah. Forget Yudika Masjid. Forget Imam Tom. Forget SQ. Forget Way of Life SQ. Forget all that. What is the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Forget all of us. You see, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of the battle, right? When there was a companion whose stomach was out, right? And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tapped his stomach to suck it in. Put your chest out. You know what I mean? And he found this as an opportunity to tell the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you hurt my feelings by doing that. Right, he immediately he didn't hold a grudge. Let, right. let, let's first break this down a little bit. Right, mm. he didn't hold a grudge. Mm. He didn't say now this is going to be an opportunity. I'm gonna hold this in my heart. Let Shaitan, the waswas from Shaitan, get me. Speak to them. Did you see when he did that to me, bro? That was yeah. messed up. Right, Why right, did he right. do that? It's supposed yeah. to be the messenger of Allah. Yeah. He's, he's not gonna consider my feelings. Right, that's messed up. Now I'm holding a grudge. Now he calls me and I'm just uh huh. Yeah, I'm just listening in my heart. Yeah, uh huh. Uh -huh. Like this is how we are now, right? Like we're feeling a certain way in our heart. We'll we'll still do what you asked me to do, but in my heart, I'm still hating on. On you and then when we're standing alone and we're in the elevator or something and someone's like yo what happened yo he hit me with the stomach bro like what was he thinking bro like we're doing that bro like I've, I've done this for him i've done this for him i've done this for him anytime he asks for money i give the money and since one time bro my stomach's out he wants to do all that sort of stuff yo that's messed up that's not what happens yeah in today's society that's what happens yep, right exactly bro immediately then and there he felt a certain way and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew his intention best, right? And this was a teachable moment for all of us. He immediately said, oh, Messenger of Allah, like that hurt me. Like when you did mm -hmm. that to me, that hurt my feelings, that hurt whatever the case might be. And immediately the Messenger of Allah saw some lifted so his own shirt up. SubhanAllah. He lifted his own shirt up and just asking him, 
I acknowledge my mistake, right? I acknowledge whatever happened, you do it to me now. And then he kissed his stomach, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? You notice this in the sunnah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is correcting him with the blind man, right. when, when he he frowned from the blind, even though it wasn't a big deal, yep. but in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was a teachable moment. The problem is we've all we all think we're perfect. Mm. We all think that, mm. you know, our ish don't stink. We all think <laughs> that we are infa infathomable from making mistakes. Aki, you're a human being. Or we're afraid, or we're afraid that if people find out that we're not, that all the followers are going to oh, go all the info scar. I found people are more related to you when you do mess up. You're right. When you when you when you are human, you show them you're human by you messing up, yep. and you take this as an opportunity to humble yourself and learn. Yeah. The sunnah is to humble yourself and learn. So so look, I'm pretty sure. If someone wants to find the bad in what we're saying right now, they can. Oh, yeah. You know, they can. Look, we've made some of the most positive videos out there, but people, they will, they will still get 2,000 dislikes, right? In a ratio of 250,000 thumbs ups, for example, mm. right? Because there will still be people who don't like what you're doing, right? Yep. Like, think about the message of Islam. Forget us. Let's go back to the, the actual teachings, right? Of the sunnah and so on. Bro, how could you hate the message of Islam? Yet people did, right? Yep. How could you hate the best of creation to ever walk this earth? Sallallahu alayhi wa Yet they did, yep. right? Yep. So who are you and I, yeah, right? Yeah, right? Who are you and I? He was criticized. He was critiqued. He was always slandered. He was always gossiped against. Mm -hmm. Who are you and I? In fact, that is the sunnah. That's what we it signed is, up for. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> so you are not... Like, you are not immune to mm -hmm. the drama. You're not immune to that. And... I don't know. That just seems a very in line with the sunnah. What you got to make sure is that you have to be able to put your head on the pillow at night and go to sleep. Yeah. And you have to really ask yourself, did I harm someone today? Did I hurt someone today? Did I, you know, do my best? Did I show the ikhlaq of a Muslim today? Did I, you know, and really question yourself before going to bed. Did you forgive your brothers Islam? Think about it. If you're trying to dig up stuff on me, if you're trying to make videos about me, have you went to sleep the night before and forgiven your brother? Right. Have you? You probably haven't. That's why when the Prophet Muhammad saw, some, saw the companion in his vision, right, in the revelation, and he saw that he was amongst Jannah, yep. and when the yep. companions went to observe his yeah. lifestyle... They're like, we don't see anything. Like, what's, like, what's he doing? I'm sorry. If you're <laughs> making videos about someone, if you're, you're holding grudges in yeah. your heart before going to bed. Yeah. Matter of fact, you're probably getting your best ideas when you're sleeping. <laughs> and you got to, oh, sure, I got to write this one down. You can't sleep because you're thinking of all these ideas that are coming to your head of what you could say about this brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not following the sunnah. Yeah. That's the truth, you know? Yeah. But... You know, to each his own. It is what it is. To, to, to each his own. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. It's not the good way to see the dawah. But I'm telling you right now, this will bring only short-term success. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, I've been on the... Forgive me for being so long-winded oh, and just speaking good, so much. It's and if good, you bro. guys are listening at home, forgive me. You know, I don't mean to like just talking. <laughs> but alhamdulillah, like just these past almost 10 years of like just Islam versus social media, right? Like... Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed me to mature and gain more experience and stuff like that, you know? Um, this this type of attention mm. affected me as a 30-year-old, right? I try to think about those young in, uh, Muslims who don't have the tarbiyah, who don't have Islamic friends, who don't have an Islamic lifestyle environment. You're at 19, fusi tube, 20, fusi tube, and all of a sudden you get all this attention and haram coming your way. You don't know how to navigate it, you know? As a 30-year-old, I struggled with it. Yeah. In the halal, right? Yeah. And imagine getting that attention in the haram. It could be so detrimental to you, yet we're so quick to, you know, Judge his lifestyle, but where's his Islamic friends? Where's the tarbiyah? There's no one there. The, yeah. He has no friends. What do you expect is going to happen when you receive that type of attention from something like that? The reason I'm sharing this is because one of my first YouTube videos, everyone is trying to grow on YouTube and all their social media platforms. Let's please cut out the, the nonsense of, no, 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 I'm not trying to, why are you doing this? Like, obviously, you want to make the best thumbnails possible, mm -hmm. the best titles possible, the best content possible, the quality needs to be mm -hmm. highest up there because you want to give beneficial da'wah to everyone, hopefully, yep. right? So everyone is trying to grow their platforms and grow their influence. Everyone is trying to, regardless of what people say, oh, Aki, no, I'm not, uh-uh. You are. Look, there is there is a type of 
Ahsan in doing this. Look, yeah. I, I think that you're using these cameras, mashallah, barakallah. This is Ahsan. Mm -hmm. Doing something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most purest way possible. When Aisha radiallahu anhu had, who had a uh, poor a beggar come to her house for some, some money, when she gave the dinar, when she was given the coin, she didn't just give him the coin. She said, hold on a second. She went and polished it, mm -hmm. put some atar on it, and then gave it to him. Mm -hmm. When she was asked why, she said, it's not his hands I'm giving to him, I'm giving him the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when we start thinking about content and stuff like that, we should be producing the highest level quality content, things, highest level quality podcasts. We should, because that's Ahsan. The listeners are, it, we're giving this in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, right, right. That's the reason we should be doing this. And thinking about the long-term Muslims 30 years from now who might come across this podcast one day, how it could help them one day. We need to start thinking from a long-term perspective, not short-term. Mm -hmm. When I started my YouTube channel, struggling to get a click, struggling to watch someone watch my video, someone to, you know, just give me what I'm looking for, which is growth, which is whatever, was a huge struggle. I remember at this time I was making content around like something that would happen in Muslim. Like, let's suppose like LeBron James said, what about hijabs? Like I would be the, like one of the first one, very similar to a method that still happens today. But mm -hmm. I was one of those YouTubers, right? Okay. Where someone, uh, uh, Reynaldo said, what about Islam? Right, right. Reynaldo made a sajda. I need to make a video about yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be videos about that. I just don't think there should be five, 10 YouTubers making videos right, about right, that. Right, I think yeah. that we need to keep it to those mm -hmm. who do it the best and let them do it the best, and mm. that's it. There was this like Muslim couple or whatever, right? It was a it was a complete social media thing from the beginning, but we were so young in in in, in social media to understand this. There was this Muslim couple, right, who had done some fraud, astaghfirullah, amongst mm. each other, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever. And they had stolen some money or whatever, and they got exposed or whatever the case might be. And I was one of those people who was making videos, the truth about <laughs> such and such person. Mm. It's my thumbnail. <clears throat> That person's here. That person's here. And I have some text messages as if I've been talking to them somehow. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, my thumbnail is so clickable. Like, I'm making my thumbnails just like... <laughs> and then, you know, like their pictures over here, their yeah. pictures over here, and there's the, the there's a DM between me and them, whatever, like, where's the money? And it's like they're responding to me with the three dots like they're about to write. Like, it's so clickbaity. It's so obvious, right? That was my first video that blew up. SubhanAllah. That was Man. my first video that blew up. And I wake up one, there's nothing like it, waking up one day, like I, I, I went to sleep, I remember I spent the whole night actually developing that video. I remember it. I wrote it, I spoke about it, I did it, I did it, I did it. I edited it, bro, the whole night. I must have slept at like maybe 5 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., right? Prayed Fajr or whatever, went to sleep, right? I had to wake up for work, right? So I wake up at maybe like 7, 7.30 or whatever to get ready for work or whatever. And this is the craziest thing that I've ever seen in my life. I check my uh, my YouTube studio and thing, and it had 14K views, right? That's never happened to yeah. me before, bro. Yeah. I barely struggled to make a thousand views and maybe a whole day. It was rough, right? Alhamdulillah, like we've come so far from them. But I'm sharing this for those listening out there who might be thinking about making content, what direction to go. Hopefully they can learn from this, right? Um, I remember I was gassed I'm like 14k that's mm. crazy kept on refreshing 20k I'm like yo this is growing like I'm growing it broke 100k I'm like that's impossible bro mm -hmm. how 30k first I'm like oh my god these feelings bro there's a dopamine spike in you there is oh, yeah. it's undeniable <laughs> That you cannot say that I'm, oh, he doesn't know, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Yeah. You can say alhamdulillah all you want, <laughs> but you can say alhamdulillah with a smile. Like, yo, <laughs> alhamdulillah, the video's doing great. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging that, bro. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. alhamdulillah, it broke what? Alham, thank you, Allah. That's sincerity, right? Mm -hmm. not, not this fake type of, uh, no, 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 he, you know, you, you know, right, no, right, he, right. no, you, you know, you, like, no, you. Like false piety. Not that false piety stuff. Like, bro, when, when Yusuf Islam came out of the prison, one of his conditions was, first, I need a public apology. Mm. I need an apology. I need you to first acknowledge that that person that you put in thing, that was wrong. Mm. Apologize publicly first. Second, my next condition is you got to make me the treasurer. Ah, he, oh, oh, look at him. He has, he's so uh, arrogant. Why does he have to be the treasurer? Oh, look at this. Look how cocky he is, right? Look how conceited he is. Look at the ego. He's the best man for the job. Stop playing yourself. Yeah. 
He's yeah. the best man for the job. And there's nothing wrong with acknowledging you the best man for the job. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. It's not you. It's Allah who's given me that, mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that, 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 that authority in the land. It's not me. It's Allah who's given me. So point it back to him. Allah knows our intentions. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. This is where people fall into this false piety. But what about my intentions? But what if people start thinking, man, stop it. Mm -hmm. You got to think. How do you think, right? Right, right? Ask, is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay? There if that's go. okay, then everything will be okay. So. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the story, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going back to it. I'm growing. My subscriber crown is growing and all these sort of things. And man, the next thing I know, like it, it's just growing more and more. And I, I, I'm, I'm on a plane. I'm going somewhere. And I started thinking to myself, I'm like, is this how I want to grow? Mm, like, mm, is this really mm. how I want to be known? Deep. Like when someone, oh, SQ just got the tea. Yeah. He got the juiciest content. And then I found myself making more videos about them. Then finding drama, yeah, finding yeah, yeah. drama. Yep. I'm telling you this, finding drama, bro, amongst them and just spreading the facade and the fitna just so I can get a click and I could get a view. Yep. Maybe two people are beefing, right? Astaghfirullah, like two people are beefing. I come and chime in about it. Yep. Oh. Someone did something public or whatever like that and I'm making a video about them. Why? Because I know I could put their name in my title mm -hmm. with their picture in my thumbnail. Now all of a sudden, I got a good video. And if you're monetized, Alhamdulillah. then there's another layer right? of there conflict is. of interest. And you know, you can, is. I, I noticed something. You can go through people's video, like libraries, whatever, and look, you know, organize it according to views. Mm -hmm. And you see the drama always rises to the top. 100%. And you see people that make even like good quality content, maybe you'll get 10, 15, 20K views or whatever. Mm -hmm. You start to take a shot at somebody. Oh, yeah. 100K, yes. 200K, whatever. Yes. And that's real. Uh, but, but That's 100% real. How many people, and you know, props to you, and may Allah bless you, you know, for asking that, having that moment of reckoning and saying, it's like, do I want to grow? Is this how I want to grow? Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. Can I, can I just say, Please. and I realized something that, how about this? Let's fast forward. Let's look today. How many views does that video even pull in? That no one even watches anymore. There's not, I haven't had a single comment on that because I'm I'm someone who stays up on all my comments. Like what I what I try to do is this. Like I I, I don't release many long term YouTube videos anymore. Mm -hmm. I stopped that mm -hmm. at this at this day. I used to release a video like every day or try to make a video every single day and do all these sort of things. But no, like. Like I, I needed to realize that how am I able to purify my intention if all mm. of a sudden I'm looking for the breaking news? Like right, right, right. I had to really ask myself, maybe those who make them have better intentions than I do. Right. Personally, I'm weak, bro. And I struggle. And my intentions are something that I always have to fight with. And I have realized that I used to be with my family, right? And I, I would be with my family, but I was not really with my family, right. if oh, you get what I mean. Like I wasn't there with my family. Yeah, I was yeah, there, yeah. but I wasn't there. I wasn't there, you know? Always on my phone. I would literally, I'll be on Twitter. I'm t man, let me share the game with you guys. I would be on Twitter. <laughs> I'd be on Google. And I had like, uh, like you know, like there's these things that you could put an alert or alarm. Okay. On certain words, right? right. So anything with Islam or Muslim, mm. I'd get the alert. Really? Yeah. So what I would do is this, right? I would type in Google Islam. Like even people do it today, right? Like, you know, I'm showing you guys how things get done, right? Islam today, right? And you'll see something, you see something. And then all of a sudden you'll see like in Sri Lanka, uh, a Muslim today was uh, kicked out the masjid, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hmm, interesting. Hmm, let me do some more research on that, right? Boom, boom, boom. Just happened two hours ago. I'm already late. Let me get on it. And then the title, uh, uh, Muslims in Sri Lanka being oppressed. And then I'd make a video about that, whatever, which is alhamdulillah good. Like you should be pointing out these things, yeah. right? But what was the cost for me? What yeah. was my intentions? Was I really doing it for the sake of Allah so I could defend the Muslims and defend mm. the, maybe those who are making it are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what their drive comes from, that they have to defend Islam. And this is how they defend Islam. No problem. But you also got to ask yourself at what cost? I was literally losing my family, bro. Yeah. Like my relationship with my spouse and my children mm. was on a thread. That's heartbreaking, man. I know people, content creators today that are on their second and third marriages. Not wives, <laughs> marriages. Let's be clear over here. The first one left them. Yep. They got divorced yep. or they divorced them. Oh, they're not supporting me in my content. Really? All you do is think about content all day long. Mm -hmm. You can finish uh, uh, being intimate with your wife. I got to go and make a video. Yeah. What yeah. the heck? Bro, what? Your life is not revolving around this at all. Mm -hmm. When Alhamdulillah, when I found myself ste stepping away from it, 
and looking at it from a bird's eye view, it allowed me to be more strategic and less hasty. I used to be very, very hasty with my videos. Mm -hmm. And this is something that people have told me, people have commented about it, but I didn't like to hear it back then. Mm -hmm. Now, definitely was hasty, 1000%. <laughs> like I was, and I think that people, content creators out there need to recognize is it them or not? Like we need to just step away for a second and recognize the content that we're creating. Is it right or wrong? So going back to the story, right? Mm -hmm. Today, that view, that video does no views. At the time when it was hot, for the first two, three weeks, it did a lot of views. It pulled in a lot of views, which allowed me to uh, subcategorize it and make a spin-off video part two to that video and then a reaction to that video. It just allowed so many different branches of that one thing. And what am I doing? Spreading their lies or spreading their Dirty drama laundry. or whatever. Yeah. And I haven't even considered what if they repented from it? Yeah. What am I doing, right? I'm, I'm so focused on the clicks and the likes that I'm not focused on being the brother to them, mm. being the Muslim, being the, the correct person who brings the information to the people, you know? Mm. And in this process of hastiness, I spread so much false information, bro. <laughs> so much false information. Like there would be something that happened. I don't even have the facts yet. Yeah, yet yeah. I'm making a video about it, speaking on authority, <laughs> point one, point two, point three. Then I'd find out that that's not what happened. Something else happened. Now I have to make an, a retraction video. Hey guys, sorry, the last video I made was ah, uh, 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 when it could have been all avoided if I gave myself a day. But how could I do that? When all of a sudden that YouTuber is going to upload yep. a video. New cycle. Who's going to get it about, first? I need to beat them. Yep. But he did it. I'm the third person uploading. I want to be the first. I'm the fourth person uploading about that topic. I got to be the first. What does that mean? Taking away time from my family. Yep. Being on my phone all the time. Ta -ta 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 -ta. On call 24-7. Uh -huh. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Yep. Uh -huh. I got to make a video about it. We just got home. Babe, I got to go. You go upstairs. I'm going to go make this video about it. Ta -ta 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 -ta. I don't even come to the bedroom. I have no relationship with my family. No relationship with my wife. No relationship with my kids. I've realized from videos like that, there's a lot of short-term success. Mm but it's not a life-changing videos. Now, we only focus on making life-changing videos and the best videos possible, Masha. alhamdulillah. How are you able to pull yourself out of that? Because most people get swallowed. Most people get swallowed up. It, it, it goes back to the example that I gave about the shirt being dirty. Hmm. You have to first recognize that there's a stain on it. And this was something that I had to really recognize in my heart, that there was something wrong with how I'm doing things. You know, my relationships with people became so businessy. Hmm. It became so just work. That's the only reason I do that. Like, for example, uh, I have an editor, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. A shout out to Usher. And uh, if, if I can, can I just put his email right over here? If anyone wants to contact him, please put it right Right, right here, right? Anybody wants to contact him to help you edit your video, whatever, hire this man. See, I'm not one of those. People might might think that, I don't want people to know who edits my videos. No, we got to build each other they, up. We got to build each other up. Bro, isn't, you know, when we say love for your brother, what you love for yourself, don't you want to see your brother succeed on YouTube? Don't you want to see your brother or sister win? Come on, bro. That's the problem. We've keep, kept all the secrets to ourselves. Bro, it was amazing. We were we were with another uh, young sort of social media influencer that we knew. And off camera at the end, he's like, I find myself, I have feelings of like competition with other people. Yes. He was so honest. And so he recognized that stain yes. that you're talking about. And he's yes. like, he's like, what do I do about That's it? That's a stain. And yeah. you know, uh, Sifa was like, like spread his stuff, share his stuff. Yes. Build them up. That's sincerity. And it's like, that's exactly it. It's like, and we try to just drop people, you know, some people, <laughs> some people who follow that channel, I think are confused because they're like, mm. why are you sharing this person's stuff? It seems mm. random, right? It's mm. like, but we're just trying to build other people up. Yes. It's not about us. We don't want, you, we don't want your clicks if it's going to mean that you're not going to click somebody else. Yeah. Like we all have a role to play. We're not making a cult, bro. This is this is what I've realized. Some people are making cults without even knowing it. Yep. They have cult following from people, right? like blind loyalty to their brand, to yep. what they're saying, that even if they're wrong, they won't get called out on the wrong because of their following or whatever. So what happens is that you start making yourself a bubble. Yep. And this bubble gets so much bigger and stronger that you're unable to see that stain that we're talking about. Mm. So like, bro, it's not hard to recognize that how do I get out of it? I wasn't feeling good about what I was making. Mm. I wasn't feeling good about it. I wasn't happy with the success that I was getting from it, you know? Maybe some people are. Like, this is me, you know? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made me in a way where I'm very sensitive to my own feelings. Like, Allah has made me in that way, alhamdulillah. Uh, it's 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 for the best, obviously, but it also works against me because um, sometimes, like, let's suppose I won't get a call from you right. or maybe you didn't respond to me. Right. I might get in my feelings and in my bag like... Is Imam, did I say something to Imam Town? Like, did he like, get upset <laughs> oh. with me? You know what I mean? I'm yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I'm like that. And that yeah. comes from a lot of issues with me as a child, with my father, with abandonment, with 
uh, abuse. Th- th- you see, when we start actually opening up the door, there's a lot of reasons to why we act the way we act. Big time. And I think that we need to all stop thinking that we're up here and really humble yourself, bro, and come to the ground. Like when the Prophet Muhammad so Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be lying down, right? He is so he so would sorry. lie down on that on that like uh, in in Pakistan we call it a charpai, right? It was like these strings that are all put together, and he'd be lying down on it. And when he moved and he turned over, he had marks mm. from that mark. Mm. Sallallahu mm. Alaihi Imagine this blessed skin having marks of that bed imagine that he could have had the best mattresses he could have mm-hmm. there were mattresses listen mattresses always existed yeah. right all right he could have had the best type of cloth the best type of whatever laying on his side so that he's comfortable and calm but he didn't right when it was time to dig the trench right he had two stones right why because he was always self-aware. He was a messenger of God, bro. Mm. He was always sensitive. He was just so sensitive and spiritually. When a person becomes spiritually awoke, right? Like awakened, you know, a per- I'm not saying I am. I'm not trying to say that. But when you start trying your best to focus on your relationship with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts opening your heart and you start recognizing your own faults. Definitely. And I think that that's where it came from. I have to recognize my faults. And I'll, I'll actually, you know what? I'll do something. This this is a good one. Maybe someone clips this out and sends it to him or whatever, right? <laughs> I want to I wanna, um, uh, shout out to Sajid Lifem, right? I think that's his Lip name, him. Sajid yeah, Lifem. Yeah, Lip, Lip, Lip him, Lip yeah. him, right? Yeah, we were both in Medina together. That's for Allah. Like maybe I'm saying his name wrong. Forgive me, bro. All right, but that's I think good. we all know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. May Allah bless his brother because it was actually a turning point in my life. It was actually a turning point in my life, right? At this stage, I was maybe making videos every day, quickly trying to get on top of the topic, trying to get on top of the topic like we always do. Mm -hmm. And in the process, I rushed and I didn't do my research, Mm. okay? I think it was something about that sellout, Ilhan, Omar, whatever. Man, these people are sellouts. Wallahi. Like, may Allah guide them. Let let me be clear over here. May Allah guide these people. They're in such a position of power that if you give the right person the right type of thing like that, Wallahi, bro, you could literally, like, change the world. You could do something. Like, having a real Amir there to help struggle for the Muslims. Not fighting for like LGBT rights and all that right. nonsense they them stuff like stop it yeah. bro this is all part of the agenda and the problem Big okay time. anyways yep. anyways anyways right so they said some act some law that's about to get passed or whatever like that and I've always been and I still am on the fence of you know we I don't think we're serving the homo I, I know this sounds crazy but like the homosexual community but there is a homosexual community bro there are Muslims who are gay it's just a reality right there's Muslims who are either having questions, they are confused. It's all shaitan, right? But there needs to be some da'wah to them to help them. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I I have experience where I know people and, you know, they've been in that thing and may Allah guide their heart and get them out of it because people have gotten out of it, right? But there needs to be some da'wah to them. But the way I did it wasn't right. Like, Mm -hmm. I I missed the mark, you know? I'm not afraid to admit it. I missed the mark, right? So uh, I think Brother Sajid, right, uh, made a video, but this was years ago, right? People are gonna probably try to find it now, revive it. <laughs> this is years ago, and I made I made this video, and he made a response to me. And I have to say, it was one of the most nicest, uh, sweetest, humblest, and like just just it was just straight up like it was so sweet, like how he spoke to me, right? It was mm-hmm. very nice. I like the manners of how he spoke to me, right? I don't know if that's how he speaks to everyone. I don't know his content like that, you yeah. know. I don't, respectfully speaking, I don't watch content like that. I hear you. That's not the yeah, type yeah. of content I consume. Yeah, period. I hear you. Yeah. Um. And I, I and I received for the first time. I received on. The, I was on the receiving end of making those videos, right? And the anxiety that comes with seeing your name and your face in a thumbnail, bro, and people sharing <laughs> it with you, it's crazy. It's crazy to receive a thumbnail uh-huh. that has your face in it right. and, and a tag in the title that has your tag in it, that has your thing. It's the like cream of things. Because even if it's the sweetest video, yep. your heart sinks yeah. for a second. It's a taste. Like, whoa, what yep. did I do? It's a taste you know? of medicine, right? It, it, it's, yeah. And I realized that that's not the feeling I want to give to others. Mm, that was like the first well. thing I, like I realized. I I'm like, that's not a feeling I want to give to others. That's deep. Because even if it was a good video I made, I don't want others to feel that way. Yep. So that was the first thing I felt, right? Second, when he gave the Nasiha in the video, I listened. I'm like, damn, like he's, he's right about it. He yeah, made sense. I didn't know that that's what the act was. I didn't know any of these things, right? So like, I'm at, and, and his stance, mashallah, barakallah, was a, point of a place of ignorance that I'm coming mm-hmm, from a place of mm-hmm, ignorance mm-hmm. he could have said ah this guy right. huge following trying to misguide right, you right, misguide right, right. he didn't take He's that to approach you. yes yeah, and to his credit mashallah barakallah 
After I learned about all of these things, and obviously I checked through the comments, and the comments were so, oh my God, bro. Like, <laughs> wallahi, I, I, I'm being serious right now. No one knows your mental state or mental health, bro. Wallahi, like, shaitan, like, Imagine a person who's like weak on that. They listen to the comments, bro. They could really go in some depression mode, yeah. right? Oh, big time. They could really be sad on yep. some stuff. You know what's crazy? Mm. And I was like interject right here. No, 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 please. I, one thing that shocked me mm -hmm. as I started making more contact, contacts and getting to know people in the Dawa scene more, how even at the top, mm -hmm. people are reading the comments. Oh, yeah. And it, it yeah, affects definitely. them. Oh, one thousand. It affects them. Like it really does get to them. You know, yeah. it's like. And nor should we ever make videos for the comments. Or it's not like that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this: like after reading, like if anyone even goes to that video and looks at the comments, the comment section is so nasty, bro. So, I knew it. Oh, he's a <laughs> the, uh, he's a the, this, and I'm just thinking. I'm just like, oh my god, this is so hurtful. Yeah. And and this is the process where I'm just like, come on, bro. Like put Sajid himself. Like put some comment and pin a comment and say, hey guys, let's all be respectful. Let's right. say do right, right, something right. ever. But there's no policing involved in right, it, right. and that's that's not a, to him. That's to everyone. Everybody no one's does it. no one's doing it that. It would be you know? cool if we had a culture. We started a culture where we start it doing would be that. Cool. That would it be cool. It definitely a good thing. would be cool. Someone amongst them says, "Hey guys, let's fear Allah." Yeah. Someone amongst them in the internet community, yeah. random. I don't care who you are, but all, your job is to go around and make sure you check the you police people and like, hey, I understand you're feeling this way, mm. but now you're entering a sin. Yep. By speaking about him like that. Now you're going. So after making that video, I saw the video, I watched the video. After I got out of my feelings, you know, mm -hmm. I made a video response to that. And the video response was something like, I'm sorry, or I was wrong, or something like that. I was not afraid to make my mistakes or whatever. Mm -hmm. But after I made that video, and I remember I got so emotional when I made that video as well too, I literally just took a break. And I took a break and mm -hmm. I retooled, right? It's about, the. I think the best people are able to pivot Mm. and retool yeah. instead of just oh my god my life is over i don't need i'm, I'm quitting you, you're not quitting you're you're tired right take a break take yep. a nap yep. right but you know we're doing so much great work that shaitan wants you to quit yep. any content creator out there like you're trying to grow like this is part of that dip process of struggle of difficulty of getting two views one view i've been there bro mm -hmm. that's why whatever views we get now bro alhamdulillah i've been on the receiving it i know what five views feels like mm -hmm. it's not that far from me bro yeah. i can still remember that feeling and to even you know someone might ask me what do you think a successful video is today mm -hmm. metrics wise right not sincerity wise not um not like Quality wise, just metrics wise. For mm. me, bro, if my video breaks a thousand views, bro, I'm ecstatic. Mm. And and this is so far in our lives now. Why? Because I remember how difficult a thousand views were. So even if we get now maybe a hundred thousand, right? I'm still appreciative of it because I'm just like, I remember what a thousand views was like. I remember what a hundred views was like. I remember, bro, what 10 views was like. I remember how difficult it was, bro. Mm -hmm. And I know how much it hurts and I know what it takes to get to the next level, but it requires patience. So after that video came out, I, I had to take a break and I had to really look at myself and what happened. And I think like we were coming out of COVID or we were still in COVID. I can't remember. It was something. I think we were in COVID still. Mm -hmm. And COVID itself was very, very weird. You know, I, I felt certain types of ways because I'm like an emotional person anyways. And after that, bro, I really just retooled. I said, hey, I need to just look at how I'm doing things. Uh, I need to be less hasty with things. And like, just be more mindful. And it was from that point on, I just started being a little bit more slow with how I moved, right? Mm -hmm. more, not, more Not just strategic, but more sincere. Mm -hmm. And I'm not afraid to admit this. I was probably not as sincere as I should have been. Mm -hmm. And all of my content, may Allah forgive me for that. I and mean, still reward me for any tiny mustard seed worth of good that was there. But I know it wasn't it, bro. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Now we're... If you're asking, how does a person get out of that? It's not the content that needs to change. It's the creator that needs to change, mm. right? I need to change. I had to now study a little bit more. I had to now just connect with the Quran a little bit more because I wasn't. Mm. And I don't think that, I still am. I still think that there's so much work that needs to be done. Mm. But if I want to benefit my viewers who are watching, who are listening, I need to be beneficial. Mm, mm, mm. Until I'm not beneficial, they're not going to get benefit. Right. You got to have something to give. I need to give some something, right? Like, uh, I, I forgot someone spoke about this and they said, like, when a person walks away from your video, do they feel like they got closer to Allah? Mm. That's a great litmus test. Mm. If the answer is no, then what was your point of your video? Right. If they weren't getting closer to Allah, if it didn't remind them of a sunnah, if it didn't teach them something, mm -hmm. where was it? So now that's my metric. My mm -hmm. metric is like, 
Did my video uh, make someone smile? Did it make them happy? Did it make them remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did it teach them a hadith? Did they remind them to get closer to Allah? Did it remind them to maybe give sadaqah? Did it remind them to do something? Our metrics and our measuring tools are so much different now, Akhi. Alhamdulillah. And because of that, I think that we've been able to silence all the noise, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And ever since that video, I haven't ever made a reaction video to someone doing something. I'll leave it to the pros. I'm not a pro. Mashallah. I'll leave it to the pros. Let them do it. Let them, you know. And, you know, when some drama happens today, there's so many reaction videos to that drama. And it's just like, what for? Yeah. yeah. You know, for, again, sorry. <laughs> sorry about this. Long-term <laughs> views versus short-term views. In yeah. the short term, that is going to get a lot of views. In mm -hmm. the long term, it's a dead video. Mm -hmm. Today, we focus on the long-term um, residual uh, benefit and the rewards that come from it. Like a video today that might get maybe 200,000 views. Yeah, it got 200,000 views in a month, maybe. But... In the long run, it's a life-changing video. Right. And it will get us recognition one day yeah. in three years and four years. But that video that you made about that person, the drama, it, no one's getting rec recommended that in three years from now. Yeah, it's true. It's a dead video. Yeah, it's got a short uh, shelf life. Right? Oh, yes. Um, so let's talk about your dawah now. Let's talk about your strategy. So you talked about sort of what was animating you at a certain point along the way and the different changes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, where are you at? Like, what's what's your dawah strategy now? Like, what's uh, what do you find? What are the things that you are putting out? SubhanAllah. That's, that's a very good question, bro. Jazakallah khair, Imam. Um, I would say this, right? If anyone looks at my YouTube stuff, and even from Instagram, I've taken like a, a gentle kind of, I don't call them even breaks, I call them a hiatus, right? Um, I, t I just take a little hiatus sometimes and that allows me to recenter, refocus mm. and stuff like that. And it's so interesting, earlier in the conversation you mentioned, you know, social media influencers are looking at others as competition mm -hmm. and I just don't. I look at them as collaborator, cool. collaborators, you yeah. know? I don't look at someone as competition. Once upon a time, um, and this is so many people do this. I'm, I'm being honest, bro. I think that this is just such a unfiltered conversation, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And one of the first things people do, and I want people to catch themselves doing this. When they click someone's account, the first thing they do is they look at the number of followers their account has, right? And if it's a competitor, right? Why are they your competition? Because they have something you don't, right? Mm. That's competition, right, right? Right, right, right? Like you're competing about a metric or something that, that's where your competition, right? You want to see how many likes does their average reel get versus your average reel, right? How many um, uh, followers does their Instagram page have versus your Instagram page have? How many comments did they get versus you? How many views does their story get versus your story what about their short what about their tiktoks what about that's why you're in competition mode right mm -hmm. because you're looking at what they have and what you don't have mm -hmm. instead you know i would recommend anyone first and foremost don't look at them as a competition first and foremost you should message them and just give them their flowers like hey may allah reward you what a beautiful video right i've realized that i'm like the big brother of people mm -hmm. i'm not your competition i'm just like a big brother for you like uh, one of the people shout to uh, Moaz. Uh, there's a brother named Moaz. Like uh, I, 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 he used to go by Halal Moaz. Now I think Life of Moaz. I think yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Name. We, I, we, you know, I know him. I know him personally, and yeah. we did a video with I him. I absolutely love Moaz. Beautiful I brother. Love. I was on the phone with him yesterday. Oh yeah. I love this kid. And you know, I have uh, my my students who are like 14, 13 years old. And they don't even look at me. They don't even care who I am. Right? They're like, yo, you know Moaz? I'm like, yeah, I know. Yo, yo. I'll be, I be riding his car. I'll be like, yeah, I know Moaz. Yo, that's my homie, bro. You want me to FaceTime? He might not pick up. He might have me on d d You know what I mean? But shout out to Moaz, right? Um, there's so many youth that love him. Yep. Now, if I was in competition mode, I'm like, damn, why, why doesn't the 14-year-old love me? Why yeah. do they love Moaz, right? Yeah, yeah. Instead of thinking that the dawah gets done. Yes, exactly. There it's you about go. the dawah getting done. Why is it important to you who does it? See, that's where you need to check your intentions. You hit it on the head. I man. think that's where I think if you if first and foremost, if you're feeling there's a competition or you're in competition, <laughs> you need to check your intentions. There's a there's something serious happening in your heart. You need to really <clears throat> check. And when you when you it's not about it's about it's not about doing it. It's about catching yourself doing it. I've realized this, you know, someone who's struggled with addiction most of their life. Like I've, I've struggled with addiction a lot of my life. This is what a lot of people don't know about me, but I've struggled with addiction a lot of my life. And I've realized something that 
may Allah obviously protect everyone from Ameen. such nasty addictions Ameen. and it could be from any level of vaping pornography cigarettes uh, uh, uh weed it could be it could be any, it could be gaming the addiction knows no bound right, right. but yeah. there's real addictions out there mm -hmm. I've realized something that I'm always in constant recovery mode mm. I've realized it the moment you stop thinking you're in recovery that's when you slip up mm. you mm. have mm. to be able to pat yourself on the back and say you know what it's been a year Hmm. It's been six months. It's been three months. Yo, that's something. It's been three days. It's an accomplishment. Bro, yeah. three days for someone who's used to doing it all the time is a big deal. Celebrate those things, right? Yeah. So I don't know where this conversation goes, but I'd be sorry. I'd be going on these tangents, right? Oh, it's right? good. Well, I got I to gotta insert something. Because Please, it was go for almost it. exactly what you said and something uh -huh. that my Sheikh from Medina, Sheikh Abdullah Shankriti, used to say. He said, there's two people. There's somebody who uses the deen for themselves. Yeah. There's somebody who uses themselves for the deen. SubhanAllah. And how do you tell the difference between the two? SubhanAllah. Exactly what you said. The person who uses the deen for themselves, they're not going to be happy unless you're guided through them. Uh -huh. You see someone guided for somebody else, you're in competition mode. Mm -hmm. Why is he guided through him? Mm -hmm. Oh, he must be astray. Oh, mm -hmm. that those guys mm -hmm. over there. You know, you start throwing shade, you start putting them in a box or whatever. Somebody who's sincere, someone who's really putting themselves in the service of the deen, if it's me or you or Sajid or Muaz or whatever, yeah, we're happy. We're mm. ecstatic. Yes, it's like Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You're in the Dawah sphere, Alhamdulillah. and you're benefiting, and yes. you're getting better. Yes. And that's that's, that's how what, it should be. That, but, but hang on a second, right? That's what should matter. Yes. But you know, Shaitan's our enemy, and he's yeah. going to cause you to be like again, going back to the Muaz example. Like, yo, know, why don't the 13 and 14 year old demographic say anything about me? Right? Why aren't they looking at my videos? Why aren't they doing these things? Right? The moment you start thinking like that, bro, you you're hurting the Dawah, and you start. If look. This is where I got from my, my brother, the, the Sunnah guy. That's my bro, bro. Like the Sunnah guy and he's killing it on social media and all these sort of things because it's the message. It's mm. not him. It's not these cameras and lightings that he's using, the edits that he's using. It's a very great message, mashallah, barakallah, right? Uh, he was actually the one, a lot of people don't know the shout out to the Sunnah guy. He was the one who encouraged me to start a YouTube channel. Mm. This is what don't, people don't know, right? Mm. He's from the same town that my wife's from mm. in, in the UK. And we met when he was giving da'wah. And I came up to his stall and I just gave him salam and said, you know, JazakAllah for all the work that you're doing. And we just became best friends from that cool. 2015, 2016, from that time. That's awesome. And he remember, I remember one day he just told me, SQ, you got to do this. <laughs> and I'm like, no. He's like, you got to do this. <laughs> I said, how? He said, you just got to do it. And, she, and, and the Senegal guy, Shoaib, he's a very convincing brother. Anyone who knows that he's very convincing, right? But he's such an amazing brother, right? So I remember he told me this once. He was just like, if you start worrying, let's suppose we're all in the army, right? Which we mm -hmm. all are. If you start worrying, whose arrow hits and damages the enemy, you're 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 doing it wrong. That's brilliant. That's great. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're doing it That's wrong. Nice. Shouldn't we only care that the enemy died and we defeated and we could all That's celebrate right. tonight? That's right. Isn't that what matters? 100%. Yep. Yes, it does. If your heart's in the right place. Mm. If it doesn't, then you're like, I wanted the clout or being able to kill the enemy or harm the enemy or hurt the enemy. Why does it matter? Shouldn't we all just be happy that the enemy is gone? We all our families can live in peace. Yep. We all could go back to our daily lives and it's good to go. But yes, if you're sincere, if you're not sincere, now you're worried about well, who does that? Who's going to do that? And all these type of things like, no, like I've found that my role in this is being the big brother. It's mm. to encourage people to continue. Hey, that was a great video, bro. Keep it up. Subscribed. Yeah. Like, hey, I just subscribed. What a great video, right? And that puts a new boost in you. Like, yo, this guy, even though I'm a nobody, but because of like whatever the, the clout or whatever the influence, mm -hmm. people think it's a big deal to get a comment from me. Right. So if, if, just to know that someone's backing you, bro, that's like a cosign. Like, yo, I'm yeah. doing something. Let me keep going or whatever. But the moment you start thinking that people are doing like, you know, are your competition, that's a huge problem because no one's your competition. No one's a competition. Like on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to compare you to anyone but your own self. You versus and you. your own capability. That's right. Your own capacity. Mm. So really ask yourself, what's your uh, capacity right now? My strategy right now is simple, bro. Put out the greatest and the best DAO video on the internet. That's mm. my strategy. And sometimes that takes three weeks to come out, four weeks to come out. If anyone looks on my my YouTube, I put out a bunch of shorts, obviously, because I'm showing you content for that video and the cool moments of that video. Alhamdulillah, mm. I post those as many times as I possibly can. Um, but long-term videos now, 
it only comes out when the video is ready. And this affects a lot of people, like partners, like because I'm partnered with a lot of people and they're just like, SQ, you said it was going to be released Saturday. Where's the video? And I'm like, hey, guys, it's not ready. Mm. And anyone who wants to work with me knows that we work on our schedule of just – Ehsan. At least that's what I think. Good for you. I think it's Ehsan. I think so, inshallah. Like, it's just us trying to be sincere. Like, making... Look, we know from the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad so, so. Him, that the son of Adam's feet will not move until they're questioned about a few things, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of those things is the time mm. and how they spent their time. Mm. One thing I've realized from this, Imam, is that anyone who watches our videos, your videos, my video, anyone's videos, right? You are now bond, you are now bonded to them for the rest of your life mm. because you've just taken five minutes from them, ten minutes from them, maybe a minute from them, maybe it was thirty seven short a second shorts or a reel or a TikTok, right? Allah is going to question you about that thirty seven seconds. There, Allah is going to question them about that 37, 37 seconds that they used, right? Now, if that thirty seven seconds were really beneficial, you are now a part of that life for them, right? right. Now, if they, yep. if you benefited them, what a great what a great thing, right? But let's suppose you watched a five minute video and it didn't remind you of Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The me Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has cursed. Right. Think about this, bro. Yep. Allah has cursed any gathering and meeting mm. in which His name is not mentioned and and ended with or something. Yep. You, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So how can you watch a video or? give some type of content in which they're not being reminded of Allah in the highest level. So mm. we've basically just stopped making videos and we only put the best content on YouTube with the best idea, with the most creative ideas, with ideas. If someone has done an idea, we don't want to do it. Mm. We want to push ourselves to the next idea. So our next video, inshallah, coming out is a social experiment, which was supposed to be released yesterday, but it's clearly did not. It's not ready. Uh, it's called, it's not ready. Yeah. It's not ready. <laughs> it's called uh, attacking a Muslim praying in public social experiment experiment hmm. and yeah it's it's oh, really okay, dope okay. Oh, it's wow. really really dope the premise of it is us um setting up we have two of our revert brothers who are on the team and <laughs> it, i'm praying in public right and the goal is to see who would defend a muslim because mm. there's so much islamophobia happening right now yep. right people are literally these islamophobes are coming into the masajids to attack people right, right? right. and there's so many people who are literally being attacked and mm -hmm. all these things happen to them and Islamophobia is happening we see people get violated and no one defends them right we wanted to see will people defend a Muslim who's being attacked in public that's mm -hmm. literally what we want to see will someone defend a Muslim who's being attacked in public yeah. and the results are incredible they're incredible it's truly a social experiment because we're not afraid to put ourselves in a condition where we look kind of silly, like mm -hmm. I look like a homeless man. I don't care. Like I don't mind. Like as long as it makes a good message. That's, yeah. that's what we're focused on. And I don't know. It's an excellent, excellent uh, social experiment. After that, we have um, uh, giving one dollar for every Quran I you recite. That's a new video coming out. That's going to be fire as well too. Inshallah, we filmed it. It's absolutely fantastic. And again, our, all of our videos are focused on empowering the ummah and helping the ummah and putting smiles on the ummah's face and reminding them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the highest level and just making just dope content, bro. Things that no one's doing or thinking about. And that's my strategy, bro. It's kind of maybe silly. On paper, it might be like, SQ doesn't post enough. And I get that sometimes. Like, uh -huh. don't get me wrong. I feel like maybe I'm getting left behind. Like, but they just made this video and they just talked about this and I'm still, oh, I'm on this phase or whatever. But then I realized that the work that we're doing requires us to just be a little slower and just put out the best piece yeah. possible. You're trying to change the game. And then anybody, yes. who, anybody who's trying to change the game, they do things differently and it takes different time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like for, in a very, very different like audience. We saw that with Paul Williams and with blogging theology, you know, like, like how many people, you know, he proved something that a lot of people didn't think was possible, that you could do long-term academic content around Islam and sort of issues like that. And now in his wake, there's a bunch of people that are doing similar stuff. Our, you know, some of my work with Yakin Institute is pretty much just redoing what, <laughs> what he does. So if, you, if you're trying to change the game, if you're trying to be like anybody else, yeah, post every day. But if you're trying to change the game, you got to be more selective and you got to, you know. I think that's what it is. We, we are trying, inshallah, may Allah accept, right? We, we are trying our best to uh, give something people never seen before, something different from storytelling perspective, from content, from the idea, and just, you know, just just taking our time with it, being the most sincere possible and having the best possible message behind it. So we don't post a lot, but 
You know, like that's the way it is. So, but when we do post, we have, honestly, I have the best community in the world. I'll be honest with you, bro. Like I'm really nothing without Allah, obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidance and everything that he gives, but without the community members, like our community is growing strong and it's because of these loyal, dedicated viewers who are not, wallahi, bro, I challenge, I could, I can challenge people. I, this is a challenge. You guys watching this, clip this clip, show it to everyone. I challenge you to look for more beautiful heartwarming, wholesome uh, comment section than mine. I challenge Mashallah. anyone. Mashallah. Bro, people's comment sections are so toxic That's at what times. we should compete in. Yes. That's where we should Our, compete. My community. Who's doing the best. Who's bro, my community. I am so proud of them, Mashallah. bro. They are always, my Mashallah. community is the greatest, bro. They are always the most positive. They are reaching out. And if there's someone who says something negative in them, there will be someone from my community who will stop them and defend them and say, hey, but do you know this, 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 this? this? And I love that. That's I love that. Up. And guess what? If they don't, I will. Mashallah. To my best ability, Mashallah. alhamdulillah. But we have the best community out there, the most supportive community, the community that people are just championing me and other people. Like, there's people in the comment section that have become friends with each other in the comment section. Allah Allah. And that's what we want to do. Allah you get Allah. what I'm saying? So our goal is to make the best community, make the greatest community, and just, you know, like I want to just meet all, all, all my community members. Like right. in Jannah, like I, I want to meet them. You know, I want to see that person watching in Bangladesh. I want to meet them. You know, like I'm the fact that someone would watch my video it's the most humbling thing that I can ever experience. Like someone watched it. Like, wow, bro. Like, wow. Like, that's just, that's so awesome. It gets my juices flowing, bro. Like, I'm so excited when I hear someone watching my video. So we just try our best mm -hmm. if, in case that was the strategy. I forgot the question was that, <laughs> right? But we just try our best to make the best possible video and call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make the coolest social experiments, make the coolest type of giveaway videos. I don't know, whatever it is. Yeah. We just want to make the coolest thing. We want to change people's lives, inshallah. And we want to change the da'wah scene. And we want to set the bar for the da'wah scene. That when you watch another da'wah video, you're like, it is not living up to the standard that it should be. Mm. And this is going to challenge, inshallah, it's going to challenge other content creators to level up their game. Mashallah. I think we've gotten too comfortable. Yeah. I think no, the right. content creators have gotten too comfortable and they just think that, hey, like, you know, I could just post out a video, people are going to like it, people are going to watch it, and khalas, you're done. But I think that by what we are doing, we are challenging people to up their game, as we should. People's games should be challenged and everyone should up their content and serve our growing, diverse community, which we have, and we need, our, we need to do our best to provide the most cinematic, uh, you know, uh, visuals and everything. That's where I think uh, Moaz and the Sunnah guy, and I'm maybe missing some people, but those are the people who come to my head mm -hmm. when it comes to that. But obviously the Dawa of Sheikh Uthman and the Warner and all these people, bro, all these people, Ali Dawa and, and Shalat the Jannah, Muhammad, and they're all doing a great job. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, like, yeah. It's we're all just same that, team. That's what we're trying to say. We're all on the same, same team. team. Yeah. We have different flavors. Mm -hmm. yep. you, might, you might like his videos more than mine. Yeah. Good. At least yeah. you're watching that and not some haram, bro. Right. Like, yep. I'm happy for you. Mm -hmm. But Unfortunately, in this world that we live in with just competition, this and that, we just forget why we're doing this. Like, yo, we're doing this for the sake of Allah, bro. Like, stop thinking that you're the only uh, soldier in the army. Like, you're not. You're not. And if you're the general of the army, shouldn't you care about your soldiers having sharp swords and weapons? Like, if they have blunt Definitely. and dull weapons, Definitely. how are you going to go to war? You're going to die. You're going to lose. You're, as a general, your focus should be your army, making sure that they're strong, their, uh, their morale is high, right? But how can you uh, do that when you're competing against them? Well, who's going to kill them? I'm, I'm, I'm going to kill them. Then that's not, that's from the hadith where we know where there was this martyr, where everyone just kept on praising him. And then when he got martyred, he was in the hellfire. Why? Because he died, he got martyred so that people could say how amazing of a warrior he was. His right. Nia was never right, yep. you know? Definitely. And we know this about the first people tossing the hellfire mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of their intentions wasn't right. So I would challenge everyone and myself, I'm, I'm challenging myself first to recognize the stains on your heart. And the Prophet Muhammad also so compared your Iman to a to a t-shirt that gets used a lot. He said, you're, he compared it, and, and you know, I'm paraphrasing, and, and, and your iman to a t-shirt that just like a t-shirt gets worn, it gets used, your iman gets worn and used. It is your responsibility to patch it up, to strengthen it, to make it better, to clean it, to cleanse it. It is your responsibility. No one's right? going to do it for you. And no one can do it for <laughs> you because on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will weigh the heart. Mm. He will look for the qalbun salim coming to him with the peaceful, tranquil heart. So that heart needs 
needs to be purified, bro. Mm. And mm. it's hard to purify when you're making videos every day, every day, every day, every day, and just focus on videos, 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 and competition, competition, competition. Like, no. Like, what about yourself? Yeah. What about... You know, your own honesty, your own, you know, your own self-care, bro. Like your heart needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm doing it. I'll be honest. I don't think I'm doing it. And we can all be doing better. But we all could be doing better. We yeah. all could be doing better. And may Allah make me better I mean, at what I'm doing. But I could tell you this. When I was making that content, I wasn't doing nothing, bro. Right. I would skip praying in Jama'at because I thought editing that video was right, more important. Right, right. I stuck for Allah, bro. Yeah. Think about it. I stuck for Allah, bro. Yeah. And I know people who heard that resonated with that yeah. because there are people who are doing that yep. today. Yep. The masjid is only a few feet away from them, but they think that somehow I got to make this video or I got to edit it that's just way more important. It's not. Mm. It's not. Praying in Jama'at. I learned this like, you know, when you say I mean with the whole Jama'at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you of your sins. You won already. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> no video. Yeah. No There's no, no video. Likes. If everyone press upload in one time, then your <laughs> sins are going to be forgiven. Or if you upload it yeah. at this time, all your sins are forgiven. Yeah. No way. Yeah. There's nothing like that for this game that we're doing. It's Mashallah. a game. No. It is, hey, go in Jama. Hey, afterwards, sit down, finish your adhkar, and then get up. Yeah. And hey, did you recite Ayatul Kursi? Hey, were your knees in the same position when you finished Fajr and Maghrib that you recited some adhkar as if you prayed the whole night or perhaps you got elevated to the heavens? Were your knees or were you so focused on, uh, 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 you know? Just chill, take a breath, mm -hmm. stop moving so fast. And this is coming from a person who thinks like, uh, I'm always hype. Yeah. Slow down a little bit. Yeah. Slowing down, you sometimes they say this statement that um, to take two steps forward, you got to take three steps back or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got to take a few steps back so you can leap forward, yeah. right? And I think that's what's happening right now. Alhamdulillah, we've taken what seems like a few steps back, but it's helping us leap forward alhamdulillah. because alhamdulillah, we're able to focus on more sincere things now, inshallah. Allah. Allah bless you yeah, wow, down, that was man. a long winded answer. That was Damn, excellent. Though, and, uh, everybody's everybody's gotta gotta pay attention. I'm talking no, way too much. Good, oh, way too much. I'm everybody's sorry. Gotta pay I'm attention. Sorry. I'm really For those who happy. had to listen to all that, I'm sorry. Okay. No, I'm gonna Let Imam talk from now no, on. No, 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 no. I'm muting no, this. I'm muting this. No, no, no. I'm going on to something else. So I want to pivot to something because you mentioned about being with a 14 year old. By the way, I'm having a great time. This is awesome. It's funny. It's really funny getting in these conversations, you know, these Dawah conversations we do because a lot of times, you know, I never met the person, but yeah. we got so much in common. It's such a like a, it's such an easy thing. It's like the conversation is so easy. It's not like unnatural. I think. So you know, you mentioned about fourteen year olds, and and you know, um, you know, I know that you're also a teacher, and that figures into a lot of sort of what you do, and probably uh, gives you a unique insight. Uh, and for me, teaching has always been super important. I, I teach online. I teach in an Islamic high school, an online high school, um, middle schoolers and high schoolers. And for me, for my dawah and even like my talks and even my khutbahs, like I've found it essential because it gives me that interface with what the youth are going through. Yes. And uh, you're in a public school? Yeah. Yeah. So even more so. So yeah. tell us about what it's done for you being a teacher, having that exposure to the kids, to mm -hmm. what they're going through. Um, what do people need to know? What are people sleeping on that, that the kids are going through? Great question. I, I want to say this, right? you got to be in the trenches. And I think that this is a mistake that a lot of social media influencer, I don't know what to call us. Like, ugh, I, bro, when someone calls me an influencer, I, I take resentment. So I'm yeah, just like, ew, bro, right. they call me no damn influencer. I, told bro. Her, I, had to, I had to correct my wife because yeah. my wife was like, um, uh, she was trying to like she's fine she's like so unplugged mashallah to yeah. i wish i could be more, more like her and it's like so she was trying to understand like what kind of person was labeled an influencer she's like yeah. well like would ronaldo be called like an influencer yeah. i'm like if you call ronaldo an influencer that would be like an insult like he's yes. like a sock like he's like a soccer yes. player like he's bigger than yes. that like i wouldn't say LeBron he's using James. his influence <laughs> yes. of actually being a world-renowned soccer player football player yes. right for <laughs> everything now his claim to fame, what gave him that, is that. But now in the sphere of everything else, people want his influence, yes, right? Exactly. Because now when, um, you know, Vitamin Water wants to talk to him, right? He's not Ronaldo, just a soccer player. He's the influencer yeah. of millions of children who follow him and look up to him. That exactly. If he drinks that, he, they're going to drink yeah. that as well, too. But if I introduce him at like a, at a dinner or a talk or something, I'm not going to say, and social media influencer. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Like, That'd be like, yo, be like, what? I have like, like golden boots, bro. Like, <laughs> exactly. I'm MVP. I'm like... Like a like a champion over here. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. No, that's a that's a great point, right? <laughs> and I mean, personally, 
I've learned to not be married to these titles anyway. It's mm. like, okay, you want to call me a social media info? I go by a dai. Like, I mm. like to be called a dawa person, like a dawa. Like, uh, like I think that on someone's flyer once, they put like Wave Life SQ and then they put like, uh, uh, they, I think they said something like uh, Wave uh, SQ. No, they called it, they, you know how like everyone has their picture and then their the name? Title, yeah, yeah. They said SQ Dawa. That's all they wrote. It just said SQ Dawa. And I'm like, yo, you know what? That's not too bad. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. SQ Dawa, just call me SQ Dawa. Like that's 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 good enough for me. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Like I'm not married and attached to you gotta you gotta have this right. You gotta mm -hmm. have my name. I'm some social influencer. Ah ah ah. I realize that this is an amana. Yeah. It's such a burden, bro, to have this type of influence or yeah. whatever you want to yeah. call it, clout, uh, influence, whatever you want to call it. It's such an amana and a burden that I feel like I'm one of the first who will be questioned on the day of judgment yeah. for having this and what did I did with you don't it. get to be like a private citizen anymore no you're like a no. public person and a public Absolutely. persona and it's uh it's different you know I had someone tell me when I first came back that like you don't get to have friends anymore mm. and I was like what what but he was totally right you know mm -hmm. it's like once you start doing this work it's like you have people that are part of your community you have yeah. people that are following you you mm -hmm. have people that you have influence over students whatever proteges men mentees or whatever but friends are few and far between Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just kind of is a really sort of interesting thing about how the way you interact with people and how they interact with you mm -hmm. is always going to be different. You know, bro, going back to the question that you were saying, yeah. how do you know? I think that, again, influencer, social media personalities, whatever, right? They're so caught up. You see, you know what it is, bro? Like once upon a time, these people were like genuinely regular, regular people, right? right? And all of a sudden, they've gotten so much attention that they've forgotten that they are just a regular person. Mm. Obviously, I know so many good people. Like, I want to shout out, like, oh, my, my brother, Hoop, Hoop Finesse. Such a great brother, you know? Like, uh, always grassroots. Love, love that guy, right? Some people have just forgotten who they were, mm. you know? And I found that I still attend halakas in my local community. Cool. Mashallah. Do you understand? Yeah. I'm still the guy who goes to the halakha in my local community. I We run a halakha in Queens. We're in mm -hmm. Queens right now. We run a halakha in Queens every Friday, 8, 8, 8 p.m. Nice. We run one. You see, you were saying, how do you stay connected to and all that sort of stuff? By doing that. Like, not abandoning your community and thinking you're some rock star, some com some guy, like, you yep. know, like, yep. uh, like that they need to, like, shut down the masjid for you or <laughs> that you got to be having a table and a cloth and a microphone and, you know, everyone quietly ha holding out their phones and trying to, like, get a little scene. That's not what it's for. People need to recognize that you have to stay grass-rooted with your community. Mm. And I think that that's the problem. I think people just get so much success in such a sh short amount of time mm. And may Allah bless them. They don't. Yeah. They, they don't have bad intentions. It's just shaitan. You know, yeah. shaitan tries to divert you slowly. You ever been driving, right? And you're sort of slipping a little bit, and all of a sudden you slip, you slip, slip, and then they have these things on the side of the road that does the rumble strip, right? Yeah, yeah, the rumble like those strip, strips, right? Those, those strips. Now, if all of a sudden you did this massive jerk, where you'd be like, "Whoa, no!" But shaitan doesn't do the massive jerk, right? He slowly steers you off the course. Mm -hmm. Slowly, you don't even realizing that you're in both lanes right now. You don't even realizing until you hit those little rashes on the road that you start getting those vibrations, right? It's very similar to that. No one ever starts off by saying, "I'm going to abandon my community." I'm not going to be with the youth anymore. That's It's actually the opposite. It's actually, Allah, give me that. I will be doing mm. more for my community. Mm. But shaitan slowly makes you prioritize that event that's happening in Brooklyn. Or, yo, they're trying to fly me out to Detroit to do this little talk. Uh, 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 uh. All of a sudden, you feel like you're some some guy. Like, you know, oh, they have a whole flyer about me, this and that. That you've forgotten your grassroots dawah. Mm. We, like, we have not, bro. I am a regular dude with a regular nine to five it's really eight to four but whatever right <laughs> eight to five maybe but i'm a regular dude bro like i am not some uh, yeah obviously when you go out people are going to recognize you that's that comes with the game right mm -hmm. but i am a regular dude i'm a regular person who when the kids come into the classroom i'm giving them high fives and fist bumps i am a regular dude yes they see me as like oh yo million subscribers oh, oh. i'm a regular dude to myself and that's all credit to my mom mm -hmm. who who still yells at me and humbles me <laughs> my wife who still yells at me yeah, humbles me <laughs> my kids who remind me that dad you need to take me to the park to ride yep. my bike yep. like you like my kids don't care who yeah, i am yeah yeah no not at all yes they understand <laughs> like hey dad has to go give dawah he has to go to canada mm -hmm. he has to go do they understand that mm -hmm. but hey dad we haven't spent time with us mm -hmm. hey dad 
you haven't taken us out, whatever. Hey, dad, you haven't done this with us. They are very quick to remind me. So I think having the right type of circle around mm, you mm. who humble you, who remind you, a team that humbles you, reminds you that they're not just gassing you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They humble you. You know, I think that's the reason um, a lot of people make these mistakes online. They don't have a team of circle of friends and people who are there to like check you and say, hey, 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 bro, chill. That statement that you said was wrong. Mm -hmm. So you could self correct. Um, but staying in the grassroots, my ears always in the mud, bro. Like, I, my feet are always in the mud. I know by Allah's grace what the youth are going through. Right. I know it. So, so let's let's talk about that. Yeah. So I want to, that's where I want to take it. So, mm -hmm. what, so that's how does being a teacher affect your dawah? And what are the youth? You're in so it, right? You're in the grassroots of it, right? You see the body image issues that the mm. media tries to put on our sisters. Mm. We see it. You know, we see these TikToks that they're dancing, right? But not only are they dancing, they're dancing in a seductive way. Yep. Not only are they dancing in a seductive way, but they're also showing a little bit of their belly. Yep. And, they're, and they're showing their curves of their body. Now, you see this regular uh, kid from the Bronx, this girl of Spanish descent, right? Her body does not look like that body, right? Her body has more curve appeal to it. It has different types of shapes and sizes, this and that, but she doesn't see that. She thinks that she's overweight. That's now, right. all of a sudden, she's going to skip the next five meals and act like she's eating and she feels insecure because all of a sudden her body is in the right way. Mm -hmm. She's not a Muslim. It has nothing to do with being a Muslim. Yep. It has something to do with being a, ch a child of Adam, a son or a daughter of mm. Adam. And she is struggling with this. Now, she's going to maybe lose the weight. But when she lo still looks in the, uh, the mirror, she's still, still going to see that fat, yep. overweight, curvy. Mm -hmm. Ugh. So when a person sees these people, they naturally don't find themselves to be beautiful anymore because to believe you're beautiful has to come from the heart because when the heart is beautiful, Aki, when inside everything is beautiful, when you don't have an ocean of tsunami of waves and emotions and feelings and all these negative thoughts coming to you, you're able to appreciate what you have and you're able to say, Alhamdulillah, wow, Alhamdulillah, I look beautiful. Allah has made me beautiful. And then you have a father who makes their daughter feel beautiful. Mm. You're the most beautiful thing in the world. You're the most beautiful girl in the world. Now they don't have to go and get that time type of uh you know uh like validation yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. from a boy yeah who's ready to give you that validation yeah, to say a few words w riz w riz he's saying what he needs to say to get your snap to get you to send him a picture or two why because that girl still wants to feel beautiful yeah because she still wants to feel beautiful she will be willing to send you any picture that you want to why and you just gotta say damn bro you're this, this 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 so now all of a sudden he's doing that and now he's gonna show his friends your picture so now all of a sudden, why? Because he doesn't feel loved. He feels like in order for him to fit in with his friends, he needs to show you all the things that he's accomplishing. Conquest. Uh -huh. So you see, you see, bro, this is an issue that's all connected to mm. each other. It's not singular issue. They're actually all on a string mm. and they all relate to each other. And it all comes down to the disease of the heart. Mm. It comes down to you not having a purified heart. And it comes down to you recognizing that, hey, I have some mistakes. I have some things wrong. Why am I feeling this way? In today's society, we're not taught to question our emotions. We're not even taught to recognize our emotions or decipher or unpack our emotions. I have so many students who, if they get a bad grade or if you tell them off and say hey you need to switch your seat or you need to stop talking or i need you to move bro they will just go crazy like they will literally just slam their stuff throw a tantrum because they don't know how to control their emotions you mm -hmm. know they have a war within but they can't win the war within so how are you going to win the war without on the outside you know so emotions are not taught to be recognized, to be unpacked, to be mm. dealt with. N none of us are taught these things, you know? So we have to recognize these emotions. We have to know what the issues are with the youth and the body image issues. That's an issue that no one talks about. Yeah, no, one even talk no one even recognizes Weren't it. Weren't we talking about this last night? In, in Queens at the Mass Center. Yeah, no, exactly the yeah. same thing. And how much the idea of sex appeal has ruined the youth and how mm. even Muslim youth yeah, like yeah, measure yeah. themselves based off of sex appeal. Absolutely. Uh, and it's totally, just the outwardly. totally ruined. Just how like, you look. 1,000%, right? While the sunnah is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to beautify the insides yeah. like he's yeah. beautified the outsides. Someone put it to me like this and I love mm. it. They said, too many people relate horizontally, mm. right? So they're trying to, like you were saying, they're trying to get validation from outside. Mm. They want to feel beautiful. And so they're, they're relating horizontally. Who's going to tell me I'm beautiful? Who's going to tell me I'm beautiful? Mm -hmm. Versus relating vertically mm -hmm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having your sense of beauty and self-worth come from that relationship. Mm. It's a whole different thing. It because is. if you're straight with Allah, you don't care what anybody else 
around you is saying. It's so interesting you say that, bro, because even relating horizontally to the youth, right? Like someone might think, oh, why? why oh, oh uh, the youth love SQ. You know why? Because he wears a hat. <laughs> he knows how to talk to the kids and all that sort of stuff. Okay, maybe that's partially, right? Mm. But in my opinion, that goes to that horizontal view that you're talking about, mm. bro. Like that's a horizontal sort of view. It's actually a vertical view because you need to understand <laughs> the depth of what they're going through. And treat them seriously. Absolutely. That's something my my whole life, my whole life, if you treat young people like they're like actually full human yes. beings, they recognize it right away. Yes, and they respect it. And they respect it and they'll trust yes. you. Yes, because you know? they want, they also are looking to be treated like an adult without the adult responsibilities, right? Yeah. Like they want that validation as well too. Like, hey, my thoughts matter, my opinions matter. Yeah. And I think that this is where a lot of parents are crippling their children, not allowing them to have decision-making authority yeah. and making all the decisions for them so that when life really smacks them in the face, they don't know how to make decisions, right? Mm -hmm. And decision-making is a strategy, it's a skill, it's a muscle that kids need to be taught. But going to the point, if you're trying to relate to them vertically, you could be an old man. Forget SQ. You right. could be someone who looks super old. Mm -hmm. But if they understand the problem the youth are going with, the youth will quietly listen to them. Like, yo, this person is wise. They know what they're talking about. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's not about looking the part. It's actually understanding the dynamics of the youth. Mm -hmm. Understanding that the youth are going through something, and they are. It's an attack on the modern Muslim man, on the modern Muslim woman, through a feminism, through this LGBT nonsense, through all of this stuff. Because they're trying to attack Islam. Mm. They're trying to attack your relationship with God. It's an attack on God. That's what it really is. Yeah. It's attack. Because look, whether you're a Christian, you're a Jew or something like that, if someone is practicing the religion, I get excited. Mm. Because bro, in today's day and age, you're taught to abandon your religion. Yeah. Now look, we could talk about the differences and the similarities and we could come to common terms. Don't get me wrong. But if a person is on some type of religious track, it makes the conversation easier. Yeah, that's the counterculture these days. Like, uh -huh. like the counterculture is being religious. Mm. Uh, and and we got to lean into that, you mm -hmm. know, and yeah, you're right. Like you find Jews and Christians, it's like they have, they're going through their thing, just mm -hmm. like we're going through our thing mm -hmm. as a Muslim community. Mm -hmm. Like you see there are Christians that, okay, now they're starting to take traditional values or traditional gender roles, like seriously. Yes. Like there's a lot of conversations that can be had. You know, yes. with those folks. And you would see that you agree with a lot of the things that are taking place and a lot of things. And if, if you're going going back, circling back to a question that you asked, like, you know, what strategy, what's this, what's that, you know, and uh, when it comes to the Dawa role and everything like that, I've realized that even with Dawa, um, you know, somebody wants someone to accept Islam then and there. Like, hey, I showed you all the proofs of the Quran. Ten minutes ahead. Right? I showed you all the proofs of the Quran, everything like that. If you're not accepting it then and there, there's something wrong with you. Right, right, That's right. why I love, um, like, you know, like Sheikh Uthman, Brother Abdul Wahab from the, the Warner. I love them. Like, you know, they're actually out there giving da'wah. Mm. It's not like on the spot. Yes, are people going to accept some? 100% on the mm. spot. But today we're learned to, we're teaching people to ridicule them. Like, if you gave someone da'wah and they didn't accept Islam, then Muslim or non-Muslim, like, you advise a Muslim to stop doing something or non-Muslim guiding them to Islam, we would immediately label them, look at their heart. They're not, right, right, they're right. not sincere. Yeah. Okay. Something's wrong with them. We quit on them. When, you know, when this idea is that dawah is planting a seed and then watering it and making it nutritious for them and the soil and the fertilizer because if you planted the seed today and came back tomorrow and to see the seed if it's a tree or not the seed would say are you new like, yeah. do you not know right, how this right. works <laughs> like you you take care of me mm. you you nurture me you water me you give me sunlight and then maybe yeah, yeah. maybe I'll become a plant. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Before becoming it. a tree. I'll come out of my uh, dirt. Maybe. If you're lucky, right? Yeah. It's the same thing with Dawa, right? Like We have to build relationships with people. And I realize that you have to have proper, serious conversations with people mm. and show them that you love them and care about them. And, and I would say... For example, I'll give you an example of my 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 video. I believe is the most successful video I've ever made. Right? Maybe not in numbers wise, but it was mm -hmm. one of the most successful videos I made. I made this video called uh, "Surprising Muslims with Expensive Eid Gifts." I, I made this some time ago for Eid, right? And it it didn't get the craziest. It has some views, whatever, right? Whatever, because metrics do matter. Because we are trying to go global and uh, you know make the DAO so mass appeal that yeah. we want to make sure Reach. that it reaches every home. Because we believe every video that we make is the best video. We have to. We have mm -hmm. to. We believe that it could be better, obviously, but we're giving the best ideas to people. Inshallah, alhamdulillah, mashallah, barakallah. But anyways, right? The best part of that video was me meeting this brother who's 
uh, who accepted Islam in the video, right? He accepted mm. Islam. He's a revert, 16 years old, 17 now, right? Uh, shout out to CJ, right? Chadwick. Um, I met him through that video. He took a shahada. If you've ever seen it, watch it, inshallah, and you'll see the brother I'm talking about. Now, mashallah, barakallah, it's amazing. I actually missed his FaceTime call yesterday, so I have to call him back. But me and him are so tight now. We're so close. And I think that that was the biggest win of the video, that I met him. Like, he's such a cool kid, you know? And alhamdulillah, like, that's what I'm in it for. I'm not yeah. in it for anything else. I'm in it for the long-term relationships that a person mm. can make from this. So, you know, alhamdulillah, dawah and all these things take time. It's mm. not some rinse and repeat method. It's not the cookie cutter method that you alluded to early in the podcast. It is something that is tailored to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent you as a messenger to them. So give them the message and be there for them and make yourself open and vulnerable. Vulnerable. Like, hey, and I, I would say that even in a podcast like this, I've made myself vulnerable, right? Like, I'm willing to share some of my mistakes and some of the mishaps and the 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 issues that I've had and the mistakes I've made because I'm not afraid of being vulnerable, bro. Like, I'm not afraid of shedding a tear if I had to, like, if I became emotional, right? Mm -hmm. People are putting too many fronts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Too yeah. many too many masks and walls before you reach their true core. Alhamdulillah, I'm trying to be in touch with my most spiritual, most honest, authentic, iman-driven self. I possibly could be like I try to view the world from the heart mm. and from the iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides me through that's how I try my best to view the world and when I start feeling like it's not there I got to check inwardly not outwardly right I got to check on the inside of me what's happening wh why that store why is that storm in my heart happening why is that unrest feeling happening mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I got to really ask myself those important questions mm -hmm. and when I do Alhamdulillah, nine out of ten times I'll get those answers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal them. He will reveal them to me that, hey, this was the issue. Fix this. Be better. Because Allah knows how sincere you really are. Yeah, you definitely. I mean? So let's let's imagine a scenario real quick where, you know, because you I have, really don't want this podcast to end, but go on. Yeah, I know, right? I don't want I this to end. Well, the, only, the, only, the, only, the only reason it's got to end it. is because we got to check out of this I know, hotel. you got to check out. You got to check out. <laughs> totally, 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 totally. But, but, um, but, you know, thinking again, because like being a teacher and being in the trenches with the youth is such, yeah. it's such an important window into what they're going through. Yes. And most Muslim parents they have no clue. Yes. Right. So if you were to say, like you like put you with a with a table and a cloth and a mic got you. In, in the masjid and you got all the parents got you. and you know all their kids from, from school, yes. what are the top three things that they need to know that wow. their kids are dealing with that they're sleeping on? Okay, so there's a lot of peer pressure. You got to remember something, that peer pressure and the idea of acceptance and validation mm. is so important to them. Yeah. It's actually important to all human beings, right? This validation idea that you're doing the right thing. Like think about yeah. it, right? If we look at Nuh alayhi salam, some scholars say the max he had was like 100 people, right? Some have limited to like, I don't know, like 20 people or 30 mm -hmm. people, something like that of his followers, mm -hmm. right? If you put that metric on paper, like, and you put, you know, like today we talk about like ROI, like right, yeah, what's yeah. the ROI on oh. a 950 year dawah mission <laughs> and you got barely 100 people? Damn, like what were you doing, bro? Like his investors would have pulled out. <laughs> right, but you get what I'm saying? Like right, yeah. so many people would just pull out like, nah, bro, we can't invest in you yeah, anymore. Yeah. Like there must be something wrong in your dawah, yeah. right? And and every messenger has felt a certain type of way. And Nuh Islam talks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicates like, I've done everything. I've called them in open. I've called them in public, in private. I've advised them. Mm. Like, I don't know if there's anything left for me to do. And that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to make the ark. And, you know, even the Prophet Muhammad saw some felt a certain type of way when he's giving the message of Islam and there's only a handful of people who's accepting yeah. him. There's people rejecting him. This idea of validation and this idea of acceptance is it's throughout it's it's human nature mm. you know to have this um this feeling you know of of longevity and stuff like that it's just in our nature so that's one thing that's one main thing that parents need to recognize that peer pressure and um the the source and the search for validation is so important that's why you got to provide that validation at home to mm. these children mm. so that they're not seeking it so in this in the terms of our young sisters uh fathers and mothers explaining how beautiful they are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
giving them that attention that they are knowingly or unknowingly seeking and searching for, right? Mm. Giving their sons those attentions that they're knowingly or unknowingly seeking for. So giving them the validation, having those like, you know, conversations with them. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, I would say is to recognize that the world that the parent grew up in is not the world that they're in right now. The parent's world is a different world from the child's world. Uh, So they have to start opening the lines of communication with their children. Mm -hmm. They need to start talking about all those uncomfortable conversations they need to develop a borderline like not borderline but like a friendship with their children a open conversation with their children an open floor but without any judgment you want your kids to come to you when something goes 1, wrong 1000% yeah. 1000% and you need to be so in tune with the frequency and the vibration of your child's vibe you know that you know something is off mm. Mm. And you pester them a little bit, like, "What's up? No, nah, nothing's up with me. No, no, what's going on? No, nah, no, nah, every, everything is good. Is there something happened in school? Like, no, 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 it's not like that. Okay, did I do something? No, nah, no, nah, you didn't do anything. It's just, you know, when when I did this, you see, yeah, this yeah, helps exactly. up, right? You know, what I'm saying, it's natural, yeah. right? You pester uh-huh. them, and you you ask them because. This, and this is the third one is really important, but you have to have open dialogue and conversation with the children. So that's the second one, right? So um, like uh, having to reinforce validation and acknowledging your children, right? Acknowledging uh, peer pressure, acknowledging the pressures that they're under and the, the social validations that they want and they're looking for and providing that for them. They're so full. Like imagine, bro, have you ever been so full and stuffed that you the thought of food bothers like, oh, bro, I cannot. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That's how we need to do with validation mm-hmm. that we have mm-hmm. pumped up the, 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 uh, the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, the self-worth, mm-hmm. not the ego, but the self-worth, the value in our children so much that they're stuffed. They don't need to hear it from someone mm-hmm. else. Like my mom, my dad has validated me so much that I don't need to hear it from you yep. that, I'm some really great student or I'm a great son or I'm a great daughter. My parents have done that for me, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. parents need to listen to the idea that peer pressure is a real thing. Your children would do that. So self uh, social validation, give children the validation and the peer pressure is real. So target that. Second thing, have these open dialogues and conversations. Create an environment of, you know, respect and rapport and love and respect and rapport with the children that they could come talk to you about them and they should be able to use one of those pieces like that. Like, you know, like you have a card, like, you know, I got to talk to you about something, but we're not allowed to talk about this ever again after this, right? right, right. Like, it needs to be one of those conversations where I want to talk to you about something, but you cannot use this against me yeah. ever because yeah, yeah. that's what uh, parents would do, right? Yeah, like, right, right, right. yeah, but remember last year when you did that and, and you're like, come on, bro. Like, don't bring that up again, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought up all these things that we've done. You'd feel horrible, bro. Like, you don't want to bring these things up. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? So have the, create a, a, an environment where your children are able to come to you and speak to you. So respect and rapport for the children environment, making sure that you acknowledge the peer pressure and you acknowledge the things that are happening in the life to provide that validation. And the third and final thing um, is learning effective communication. Mm. I think that that's a struggle that a lot of people in general, let alone parents have, yeah. but they don't know how to communicate, understand people. Their emotional intelligence is so low. Mm. And I don't blame them. I mean, the father's working their butt off to just provide for you. And this is what this country does, the rat race and the dunya does to you. It's a rat race yeah. that you don't want to spend time eating dinner with your children. You would rather be on your phone yeah. and you just need a break. I get it, right? But you need to have emotional intelligence and put your family first and learn effective Effective communication. If I could provide a quick skill for all parents and all people listening out there, I, you know, if you allow me to, Definitely. there's two forms of communication that people uh, misread and they don't know how to judge upon and like you know uh, sift through. You know, because you have to know how to compartmentalize mm-hmm. things. You know, yeah. When a conversation's happening, there's only two forms of direction that the conversation is coming from. Only two places. Either that conversation is coming from a place of love Mm. or it's a cry for help, right? Mm -hmm. So when your child is coming to you and talking about this issue that they're having, right? It's a cry for help, right? Now, all of a sudden, if you as a parent start saying, well, why didn't you tell me yesterday? Right. Huh? Where were you when that happened, right? If you would have told me day before yesterday, I could have helped you with that. And now you want me to do... Now you're crying for help. So hang on a second. Your child's crying for help. Now you're crying for help. Then it makes sense. But dad, like you didn't see what I was going through another. But no, you did. Now both of you are crying for help. Who gets the help? No one. Mm. So when one person's crying for help, you got to come from a place of love. And that can only come when you become self-aware and realize, hang on a second. Let me, I need to step back from this and say, nah, 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 nah. Like 
okay, my son, my daughter is crying for something right now. What is it that they need? So they came to you with some issue. Instead of your first immediate response is like, Astaghfirullah, ah, 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 ah. Try to understand the subhanallah. Are you okay now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you okay now? How are you now with it? I'm fine with it. I'm I, I'm fine. I'm getting over it and all that. What was what was the tough about it? Oh, okay. The, uh, this this happened, and then my friend said this to me and all that sort of stuff. No way. Who's the, who's the friend? This them and all that. So have you talked to him? How you felt about that? Now they're just opening up to you about things that you don't even know that they were dealing with. Yeah. Right. And off it's of a, a pace it's, of love. It's a it's a switch off and on because if you react the first way, like you said, if you respond to a call, to a call for help, what's the chances they're gonna come to you? The Again, second time. now you've you burned that bridge. Yes, you shut them down. Yes. So you have to remember that effective communication always comes out to this. And honestly, if this was the clip alone, like a four-minute clip mm. for a parent, like this needs to be on the channel by itself. Parents need to recognize that they need to come from a place of love with their children. And, um, you know, you cannot cry for help. Now, look, we could talk to the kids about how to deal with their parents. Mm. And we could talk to parents how to deal with their kids. But this idea of effective communication knows no bounds. Like yeah. this goes with everyone. So you with your students, right? If all of a sudden your students are complaining about things and then all of a sudden you start complaining about them, like, yo, you give too much homework, mister. Yo, what do you mean? I didn't give you homework this whole week. <laughs> now you both are crying for help and yep. all this sort of stuff happening, right? So you instead you've got to switch it up on them. You got to come from a place of love. And then there's a time for you to cry for help. So what does this mean? Like you never address the issues? I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that there's a time and place to address that issue, right? So let's suppose someone comes with their wife. You know, uh, you know, people people have husband and wife marital issues. Like, you know, the wife comes to you and she's saying something to you, right? That sounds really, really negative. Or maybe the husband comes to the wife and saying something that sounds really, really negative, right? That negative is really just him or her crying for help. Now, you have an option. You could either recognize it. And come from a place of love, or you could just start crying for help too. Yeah. Right. So uh, the wife is saying something like, "Are you always leaving the towel on the floor?" I'm I'm going by my memory, but my wife says to me, <laughs> "You know, you're leaving the towel on the floor. Your box is over there. You're doing this. There's a mess. You didn't put the plate away. You didn't. The microwave is open. You left the fridge open." Da, 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 da. And I could be on some. Yo, who provided this? Right. 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 Yo, who like and and <clears throat> I go out to work so that you could have yep. this escalation. Yeah, you just escalated. What do you mean? Huh? I'm doing laundry all day long and after you and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, okay, I get it. You're working, but you're not doing this part over mm -hmm. here. I shouldn't have to. And now all of a sudden, Shaitan is like, yeah, yeah. he was popcorn. Like, yeah, this is what I want. Yep. Instead, you need to recognize that, hey, this is a place of uh, cry for help. This is what she's saying to me right now or he's saying to me right now. Hey, listen, I'm sorry about that. You know, how can I make it better? Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. I'm sorry about that. I, I was in a rush. No problem. I'll, I'll pick it up right now. Anything else? Okay, cool. Okay, no problem. Now, Circle back to that in three hours. Mm -hmm. And let's suppose your wife spoke to you in a way that you didn't like, or your husband spoke to you in a way that you didn't like, it still rubbed you wrong. In the moment, you ate the humble pie. Yep. In the moment. Yep. But now, three hours later, baby, you're okay. Hey, baby, do you have a second? Yeah, yeah what's up? They, they forgot yeah, about yeah. it. <laughs> they don't even expect you to talk about it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? They, yep. they, you know, baby, remember earlier when you when you spoke to me and you, you know when the whole towel thing happened or whatever? Uh -huh. Like, yeah. So listen, when, when you spoke to me, next time, can you just speak to me like a little nicely? Because yeah. like, you know, when you spoke to me, it just sounded like you were yelling at me when it wasn't really even my fault. Like I just had left the towel. Like, you know, it wasn't that mm. big of a deal. Mm. And when you said that, it made me feel like this. When you come from a place, it made me feel. Mm -hmm. The other mm -hmm. person, they're left defenseless like you yeah. can't what can you, I do? you've uh, you like if a person's like you shouldn't armed, feel that way you, de uh, you you've disarmed them mm -hmm. like ah oh. and then they they realize because no one's a jerk over here they're like ah yeah. oh, hey hey listen I, I didn't i didn't mean it like that i i just got frustrated yeah. why, why i said that to you and spoke to you that way I, did, I didn't mean to speak like that so please forgive me i'm like no 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 it's I, I forgive you it's just like moving forward if please just be mindful because it hurts my feeling a lot and then i think about it and then I, like no no i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry and then you know it gets yeah. fixed up so it's not like there isn't a time to circle back to and come from a place of love but right now might not be that time yeah and you just got to be smart yeah, take and turns. emotional intelligence yeah, when, when yeah, it comes you got to take turns and, uh, and uh, everybody's got to, you know, especially in a marriage, you know, you got to you know, play tennis. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, that's okay. Now's when the time when I'm needing and I need you to take my emotion seriously. Yes. And then we're going to take turns. The problem becomes when you start competing the competition yes. of who gets the last word. Yes. I mean, you got to ask yourself, do you want to be, do you want to be happy or do you mm. want to be right? There you go. That's uh, <laughs> right? Harvey, Do you right? want to be, do you want to be in love or do you want to be correct yeah. and win?
Yeah. Do you want to be? Do you want to win the argument? Or do you want to be in love? Those are two separate conversations, you know. And you can't be in competition with each other. It's collaboration because now your children see how you handle conflict. Yep. Your children are gonna learn from you, man. Yep. Yep. And your children, nobody. Listen, I was raised in this environment. Nobody wants to see their parents fighting because your parents are supposed to be the rock foundations of how you live your life. Mm. And when you see them like dealing with conflict in this way, it upsets you, and you whether you know it or not. And children don't want to see their parents fight. I've grow grew up with it. They don't like it. It's not good. And it only teaches you how to fight with others and handle your conflict. So, yeah. like, for the sake of your children, let alone the sake of a lot, right? Mm. The sake of your children who are witnessing you, mm. like, take it easy, go in the room, sort out your issue, but don't do it in front of the children. Yeah. And one person has to eat the humble pie. Yeah. And stop thinking about competition, who's right, who's wrong. Just do your absolute best to, like, have a collaborative environment and just have a happy home. Mm -hmm. Happy homes matter. So um, the last thing I want to ask about is that I, we've noticed that recently you've gotten into more humanitarian work. Yes. And I'm so we want to ask about how has that experience been for you? Um, it's a really cool part to sort of add on to your dawah and your influence on what you're doing. Yeah. So just wondering if you could talk about that. that. So you, know, you know, once upon a time, I would probably think like, oh, I got to do this part. I got to do this. And it's also that this SQ, SQ, this figure, right, needs to be like, you know, celebrated in the Dawah community, celebrated in the humanitarian community. I don't care about any of that. Allah is my witness, bro. Mm. I could care less. Mm. If someone needs help, it's time to help them. Yep. Hey, you have a campaign that needs to be shared. If you DM it to me on Instagram and I somehow see that DM, I'll put it on my stories for you. No problem, right? Mm. Because once again, we are not in competition with each other. I am not the only soldier in the army. We all are collectively collaborative in our experiences like that, bro. When I went to Yemen recently, it changed my life. Like to see a war torn country, you know, and I'm not even talking about Syria, like Syria is worse, but like I went to Yemen in the south of Yemen and Aden, and bro, there's buildings that are leaning because of a missile that hit them, a bomb that hit them. And there's holes in there. The structure is clearly damaged. But at nighttime, you'll see a light flickering in there because people are living inside of it, mm. right? And, you know, I've seen the humanity of these people where they're living in tents. And a tent, calling it a tent is like an overstatement. I mean, it's an old, um, you know, uh, you know, like a TV box that they use as a wall and a bed sheet that has holes in it as the roof. It's not really a tent, but whatever, right? They would tell you to, when you walk inside of their tent, take your shoes off, right? The humility of like, I'm keeping this space clean, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It was beautiful, right? Like we stood in some space, we walked in someone's tent and that was like their living room, right? But it was also their, near their bathroom and it was also their kitchen, right? Talk about an open concept, right? Open floor plan, <laughs> right? It was also their kitchen because uh, they were just like, yeah, then we come to our kitchen I'm, and I'm looking, I'm like, where is it? And they just point down. And bro, there's just some wood. And like, they're just running a fire, like right around there. And it's just the most, hu hum it's just, bro, it's the humility that you have is just incredible. Like, it's just about humility. It's not about being humanitarian. It's not about like, man, it's just about helping the Ummah, bro. Like, yeah. we just want to help the Ummah. Like, mm -hmm. here in Syria and Palestine, I'm going to Palestine, inshallah ta'ala, this Tuesday. Mashallah. I'm going over there. We, we have a project where we're building, we're doing an expansion project on a uh, orphans, a school for orphanage, uh, orphans in the Shuafat refugee camp near Ramallah. Mashallah. And we're trying to build that uh, extension on top of it. And we're just trying to do our best, bro. Like, we just want to help the people out. It has nothing to do with, like, you know, humanity. Is that what it's called? Humanitarian work? Yeah, like, we don't care like yeah. what it's called. The job needs to get done. Mm. It's not, you know, it's not about, man, people are so focused on their branding yeah. and like, oh, but I can't share that because uh, my my um contract with them uh, conflicts with them and I can't I can't do this and I can't big that up and I can't like what are you talking about, bro? Like if I have a contract with someone, right? A partnership with some Muslim organization that is limiting me from spreading someone else's, I would never ever even take a contract with them because mm. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in just being exclusive to one person and just doing whatever, right? Like it's like, obviously like if I'm doing one project with Yemen here, the other Yemen project doesn't make sense, right? If you're showing me a Syria project, I'll share your Syria project. If you're mm -hmm. showing me a Pakistan project, I'll share your Pakistan project. It doesn't make sense because I'm doing Yemen, you know? We right. could combine, don't get me wrong, but like it doesn't make sense from that perspective. But like, 
I just want to help, bro. Like, I just want to help. I feel like I'm talking about myself way too much. But, like, I just want to help people. I want to make the greatest videos. I want to bring people on that experience of helping. And I just want to encourage people to help more. And may Allah just use me to give more da'wah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the ummah and everyone watching this to give more da'wah and allow us to focus centrally and specifically on giving da'wah. Nothing else matters. Stop competing against each other. It is about the da'wah. Just give the da'wah. It doesn't, stop trying to like focus on building your brand, mm. right? You know, and we'll end it on this. Stop calling people, you have to call, you have to call people to Islam and not yourself. There you go. Stop calling people to yourself. <clears throat> There you go. Call people to Islam. Call people to the Tawheed. Call people to the oneness of Allah. Stop calling people to yourself and your brand. Stop it. There is only one brand, and that's the brand of Islam. Call people to the brand of Islam. Because you're, don't think that you're not corruptible, because you are. Don't think that you're immune to from some type of test or fitna because you are. You are one baddie sliding your DM away from messing up. <laughs> Don't think you're some pure guy here, man. You're not. You're one baddie away from it all throwing, being put about. Mm -hmm. You're one loose conversation away from it all going to, away. Mm. Stop thinking about yourself. Put the deen of Allah first. When you are doing something wrong or haram, I want you to imagine that you're holding the flag of Islam. For you to do some haram, you have to drop the flag of Islam to do that haram. Mm. If you are interested in watching pornography, you are holding the flag of Islam. You have to put that flag of Islam down because you're not going to be thinking about Allah and His Messenger when you're watching and doing something wrong. You have to put that down just so you can watch the porn and now the flag of Islam is on the floor. What did we just do? For what? Yep. So we have to put the flag of Islam first. It, if you drop the flag, we lose. There was a companion. Right? Of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was a battle of Uhud, if, I've, if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me in the comment section below. Or you, bro. And his job was the flag bearer. You know? Like, that was his job. He was holding the flag, and his arm gets cut off. And before the flag could drop the floor, ah, he grabbed it with his left hand, right? His other hand. And the blue, he's holding it. Because once the flag goes down, the, uh, the yeah. opposition believes they won. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They chop his other arm. Grabs it with his mouth, bro. Grabs it. Oh, actually grabs it with the stumps. Mm -hmm. Grabs it with the stump. Grabs it with the stump, right? Grabs it with the mouth, if I'm not mistaken, as well, too. And, or with the stump. And then his head, his neck is chopped off. Do you get what I'm saying? Until he did he did the best that he possibly could. So I'm asking everyone, are we all holding the flag of Islam? Which we all are. We, everyone is holding the flag of Islam. This is not limited to some special subscriber crown. It's not like mm -hmm. when you get 10K uh, followers on Instagram, that's when you hold the right. flag of Islam. Right. Or 10K subscribers, or a few TikTok million views, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That's when you're holding the flag of Islam. Mm -hmm. No, you are currently holding the flag of Islam right now. What are you going to do about it? You know what I mean? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to drop the flag of Islam to promote your own brand or whatever? Or is your brand the brand of Islam? And, you know, this deen is uncorruptible, but you can be corrupted. So please, focus. Spend time with people who love and care about you, who are not afraid of correcting you. People who are not afraid to tell you the bitter truth. Stay humble yourself. Be with your family and friends who will tell you how it is. Stop having a circle of yes men mm. stop holding a circle of yes men even in Pharaoh's circle there was a man right who's known as the believer we right. don't even know his name right right who checked Pharaoh and he said are you gonna are you attacking him because he just says that he mm. worships Allah like mm. are you really gonna do that bro like wh why are you doing this you need to be checked by people and if you're becoming this monster where no one can tell you anything, you're too, your posse, is, your circle is growing so much that when you walk into places, there's so many people there that no one can even approach you. You become approachable. You're doing something wrong, bro. Humble yourself. Go back to the basics. Go back to the, go back to the tarbiyah. Uh, go back to fixing your heart. And just go back to the basics of Islam because, you know, chances are that there's a storm brewing in your heart. And if you don't settle it, you're going to burn out. And you're going to harm the deen more than you're trying to hurt it. Yep. If you're trying to help the deen, take a break. You're tired, take a break, realign and readjust your intentions. Mm. Intentions matter. Readjust those things and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will handle the rest of it. Allah Akbar. SQ, you the man. Thank Bro, you so this much. Is, this, is, this has been one of my, <laughs> my favorite podcasts to talk about, alhamdulillah. This is and wonderful. I'm a humbled imam that you've invited me here to talk to you, inshallah ta'ala. And I'm looking forward to all the great work that you and your organization and the da'wah and Yudika Masjid are all going to be doing, inshallah ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you more sincerity. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you uh, spread the deen more. Ameen. And, and, and just like 
not listen to all those people who might be trying to tear you down because there's two ways to build the tallest building. There's one way to compete with the person and build a building mm. and the other way is to tear down their building so yours is the tallest. Mm. And I think we all have to decide which person we want to be. Mm. Allahu Akbar. We'll be in Queens, we'll be in touch and we'll be doing more stuff together. Say inshallah. that bro. May Allah bless you guys. You too. Barakla fika. Assalamu alaikum. Well, this was an absolute pleasure, bro. No, no, no. This was an absolute pleasure. Jazakallah khair. Uh, I pray that people benefit from it and that the audience, you know, really, really benefits from this. Alhamdulillah.